Y'all, you know what it is. It's them kids and wives and 925s, but we are still married to the games. Episode 348 up in here. It's your boy Gabe Patillo with Tim Router, Ed Placencia, and Chris McCracken, of course. And as always, we are talking games and life, life and games. Thank you so much for being here. And if you were put off by the yelling and you're like, man, this is supposed to be a video game podcast. We're doing all this yelling. Uh, it happens like three more times. So, <laughs> yeah. So prepare, prepare your yourself. Heart. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you're a gamer, you should be used to yelling by now. I mean, right? right. Shoot. Yes. Oh, Ed Placencia. Yes. What is going wow. on with that? That's some energy right there. <laughs> that wasn't even one of the yells coming up. <laughs> no, that wasn't. No, it was Sorry. Not. Three more still. Uh, that's right. Uh, doing well. Doing well. I uh, had a nice week. Um, this weekend, Sarah and I went over to a friend's house, and we taught Sarah how to play Euchre. I don't know if you guys know oh, that card oh, game. I played no. Euchre I've forever. never heard of Euchre. Uh, it's definitely a Midwestern card game. I think I've met one person outside of Indiana who has heard of it that isn't from Indiana. Is it uh, played with just normal deck of cards or is it specific Normal deck cards? of cards, but only okay. some of the cards. Uh, gotcha. And so taught Sarah uh, a new card game that she enjoyed. And it was a lot of fun. And it was just nice to, when, when I was a kid, our parents would have friends over and play cards. And I remember thinking that just that sounds like they're having so much fun out there. When hey, I get just older. cracking up. Yeah. Yeah. I want to have people over and play cards. Well, now we play video games, but it is kind of cool to put the games, <laughs> the video games aside and play card games. And, and uh, so that was a lot of fun. Now you just need children upstairs jealous of what's going on downstairs. I know, right? <laughs> exactly. I want to know. What yeah. are you doing? <laughs> exactly. Go back Batman. upstairs. Batman's jealous. He's like, I yes. don't understand. Why am I locked in this room? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I'm going to poop on the floor. Exactly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then uh, the next uh, the next day, the Tatmans came over and the old Tatmans, the old Tatmans. Tatmans. <laughs> and uh, I said, "Hey guys, now that uh, the new Borderlands Two is four player couch co op, does anybody want to play?" And we were surprised. Sarah and her sister Stacy and our niece Kayla, they were like, "Yep, really, and just like we that." We played four player couch co op Borderlands for hours. And it was so much fun. And after we were done, Sarah's like, I, th I yeah, it, it was cool. I liked it. There's so much stuff on the screen, splitting that up into four on the screen. It, there, it was hard to see sometimes okay. what you were doing. Okay. Yeah. And I said, you know, with, with two players spl split screen, of course, it's a lot different. Do you think maybe you and I would want to, would you be up for playing through the game, just the two of us and start our own saves and, you know, you'd have to start a PlayStation account because it doesn't save progress of guest players. Mm. And uh, she was like, yeah, let's do it. So Sarah really? and I are going to beginning, be beginning a Borderlands 2 adventure sometime here in the future. Oh, so. my All goodness. Right. So just yeah. tell, her, tell her to put a little bit of thought into the name. <laughs> Granted, yeah. you can change it yes. now, but yep. you might as well right. think about what you want. Taking those next steps as a couple. I'm so proud of you. I know. Right? Exactly. <laughs> That's funny. So, yeah, we haven't started playing... Uh, the two player version, but definitely looking forward to that. Um, gaming wise, of course, playing Overwatch still, uh, watching the, uh, the Overwatch league. It was a, it was a good set of matches. If you weren't London mm -hmm. this week. Uh, and so they had uh, their stage two finals. We were just watching before we recorded the widow one V one all-star match going on. And, uh, so just watching a lot of Overwatch League, playing a lot of Overwatch, having a lot of fun with that still. Mm -hmm. And I am at, I think, just over the 38-hour mark in Days Gone. Wow. Yes. And I am still having a great time. Really? Good, dude. Awesome. Are you, uh, like, focusing what on a ton heck? of side stuff? So have you, have you advanced the main story much, as far as you can tell? It's, uh, I have advanced the main story. I, I'll do a side thing when it comes up. And mm -hmm. a lot of times one story mission will actually, uh, it'll not only chip away at that story, but also side stories will also be included in that story mission. Uh, so okay. sometimes one mission will chip away at a couple and I'm definitely still taking my time. Uh, there was one particular mission that had a really weird glitch that I had to that turn off the play was hilarious. PlayStation and. Oh my gosh. It was basically, I'm on a motorcycle. I'm accompanying someone 
And all of a sudden, their motorcycle stops to maybe one mile per hour. Yes. Oh, and awesome. And we just walked. I walked my bike the entire rest of the uh. way there. We finally got there. <laughs> I, and I restarted the checkpoint a couple times, and that didn't work. And because I stream from the PlayStation, I knew that if I turned off the game, it would cut the stream off, and I didn't want to do that. So we finally made it to the mission, and then the bad guys weren't spawning. It was just really glitchy. Oh, did so it keep glitching? It kept glitching oh, once we I got had to there. Leave. Yeah. Oh, man. So yeah. sorry, Ed. Dang it. So fortunately, it wasn't all that bad because, you know, of course, you have a few missions you can choose from. So I just chose another mission after that, and we kept going. The next day, I, I started with that glitchy mission. No problems whatsoever, you know? And uh, so it was, it, it, it came and went. The story today, man, they're telling some story in that game. Are they really? Oh, man. Wow. Doggone I heard, it. I, I can't heard. believe that this thing has shown up the way it has. Doggone it. Man, I was clenching my teeth and oh, had okay. my hands oh, okay. over my, no, not my, I was clenching my butt as well. <laughs> oh, perfect. <laughs> At a different part. But uh, when, I, when I saw, uh, if you remember... <laughs> Uh, the very first thing we saw from E3 where it looks like they're at an abandoned lumber mill of some sort and it's just a massive that. amount yeah. of horde. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I showed up which at what I believe is that mill and the horde was inside. And as soon as I saw the horde in there, I was like, okay, here we go. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> um, and it was, a, it, was a, it was a butt-clenching mission, that's for sure. It was a lot of fun. Um, but man, the story they're telling just hands over the mouth and a jaw hanging open wide. And just, it was so good. And I thought that I was done today. Um, and I finished the story I was on and it was like this particular storyline you're on, you're 76% finished. So Ooh. I was kind of happy because I'm definitely not ready for it to be over. I want mm -hmm. this game to keep going. Good, 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 uh, good. And so, yeah, just having so much fun with this game and uh, the, the skill tree that you unlock the skill, you know, it's one of those games where every skill is one that you want. There yeah, are very few clunkers. So I love it that I want them all, but I also hate it because, you know, it's you get one forever. skill you gotta at a time. Yeah, yeah. Choose uh, it wisely. is nice that some of them, they don't cost two points or three points. They all cost one point, but you have to work your way down the, or up the tree or whatever to get to some of them. Ah. Uh, but man, the game is just so much fun. I'm having such a blast. And still, I'm so happy to see people in the stream watching live and saying, wow, I, the game looks great. I had no idea. This story is really good. This scene is really exciting. I think I want to play this. Uh, so that was just really cool to see people, uh, you know, considering how blah we, uh, we all were about the game going, going into it so cool to be pleasantly surprised uh so it's just exactly. been a really really fun time uh i didn't pick up rage i watched oh, about you didn't. an hour and a half two hours of gameplay uh -huh. and i don't know that i will people are um, saying it's it's, yeah, it's it's a toss a lot of up people there. are saying that yeah I didn't those who, it was out <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> those who like it really seem to like it and those who don't you know, I, I saw in the Discord today one person saying, I'm loving this game. The other one saying, I am so regretting that I bought this game at full Ooh, price. Yeah. Interesting. Um, Is there, yikes. can you elaborate at all on the reasons why I hadn't had time to catch up? For like, me, uh -huh. and this is just me, and I, 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 I use this analogy in the Discord, and it's probably not the best one because the game isn't, it does, it isn't like Destiny as far as like, you wouldn't compare them. What's this game like? It's like Destiny. You would never compare them. Yeah. But, the guns remind me of Destiny. Okay. Uh, the setting uh, and the monsters kind of remind me of Destiny. and Or, or like a Halo game. And that mm. kind of a shooter game, I'm just not that good at. So the game looks great. Everyone's talking about how it feels really great. And the gun is super in, uh, intuitive and responsive. But I know that I probably wouldn't get too far into it before I put it to the side. Yeah. So I, I will probably continue watching other people play, but I don't know that I'll pick it up for myself. I've heard that the gameplay is amazing, but the world feels dead. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and is it supposed to be like a Mad I mean, Max kind like. of a world? Yeah. It's yeah, post apocalyptic, it, I mean, but they're just yeah. saying, as far as like, it just feels a little stale and, you know. Oh, okay. As and from as what it looks. I. Yeah. 
from what I you know, you watch the trailer and it's nothing but neon colors popping all around. Right. And I read a thing that said the biggest mistake that the game made was it starts off in the most drab environments. So Ooh, yes, I didn't see a lot. I saw some flashes of that color that you saw in the trailer, but I didn't see in the first hour and a half, at least anything remotely like what we saw in the trailers. <sighs> uh, so, and that's, again, that's just me watching it. You know, it, who know, it could be a game where playing it feels way different than watching it. Is it, it um, like a, a single player focused game? It's not an online co-op thing, is it? If they're, I mean, not, they were playing the story mode. I don't know if there's okay. an online okay. mode, but yeah, I was watching the story and um, yeah, it's fun to watch. Yeah. Roadhog, the guy that voiced Roadhog plays the bad guy in this game. So that was kind of fun to watch, but uh, is he um, using the same voice? Yeah. Right. He's just got a really deep voice. If you know, it's him, yeah. it's a little more obvious. I think mm. I got gotcha. you. <clears throat> But uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll probably wait on Rage, but definitely not saying I'll never play it, just kind of doing a wait. And I still got Days Gone, you know, so I'm yeah. not itching to move on to anything else. There you go. But uh, yeah, that uh, is a good week. Good week of gaming for sure. There That's you go. Awesome. Good deal. Router. Your game. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I did that. Um, a huge... Huge congratulations to my wife. Um, this evening, we she uh, has purchased a cargo van for the store because she needs it for all of her balloon oh, orders. Oh, for the she's balloons. Oh, so, wow. For those balloon installs. For those balloon installs, big, which are big, nuts. Big exactly. Balloons. Oh, and this is extended cab. So it's like, it's mega. Mm. Uh, so we were at the dealership for four and a half freaking hours this evening. So not how my evening was. Yeah, what was that about? I had planned it. I, it just, it just take, it took forever. I don't know why. Wow. It just yeah, took it forever. But um, I'm super proud of her. And it was basically, it, it's definitely a necessity. Now we have been borrowing, uh, Pauline and Pierre have a van. We've been bo borrowing their van. You've been borrowing which has the been plane great. to drop and, off yeah, the balloons. We, we've been borrowing the plane. <laughs> <laughs> dropping them like, don't put the helium in yet. They need to go down. Right. Exactly. <laughs> you know how firefighters, you know how they do those like drive-bys and, and dump all that water? I'm going to and I'll bring the tank with me. <laughs> exactly. It's just like when the they're ground. fighting forest fires. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. So, it looks um, like an episode the, from Just Cause. Exactly. Minus all the explosions behind it. Yeah. <laughs> so we uh no, it, it's definitely needed and uh I, I'm so proud of her. I mean, she has like three installs this week to this weekend, and like it's just going and going. And and so we've been having to use our car uh along with Pauline and Pierre's van, and it's just there's just a lot going on. So she she bit the bullet and she's like, All right, let's do this. So we Sweet. were able to get a van, which is great. Um, so yeah, so that was really great. So uh, question, every... where does it live? Is it like in a at your house? Right now it's parked in my driveway. And so mm. what I think what we so we have a, a back alleyway that leads to our door, the back entrance to the store. So I think we're gonna try and uh, park it back there. And I, I'm gonna speak to the um to our landlord and see if we can get like a permit or something to keep it back there. Um, if not, we may just have to move it around a little bit, or we may end up having to get a, like a storage space kind of parking spot. Um, gotcha. that's worst case scenario. Um, it shouldn't be too much, but it just for convenience sake, we're just going to keep it back there until somebody tells us not to. Um, so we'll see. <laughs> um, I'm sure that's going to change in like one week when the cops have a ticket on it or what have you. Yeah. Um, hope everyone had a great mother's day. We went to lunch with my family and then went to Lauren's parents uh for the rest of the day uh it was just a lot of fun just hanging out with everybody um man like six more days of school for piper as a first grader which is insane wow yeah. and uh and then we get into our summer and camps and and trying to figure out where to put her so we can keep working and exactly uh, so right. so mm -hmm. it yeah it's crazy um speaking of balloon installs uh i don't know if you guys have ever wanted to have this on your bucket list but i had it checked off so uh, Tuesday, Lauren had a balloon install at the mall, and uh, it also had to coincide with a Girl Scout event that she was supposed to host, uh, where they would do their community service and they would help pick up trash uh, over at this park close to uh, downtown Franklin. And she's like, babe, I'm not going to make this because I still have to install this balloon. Guess what you're doing? You're going to lead 12 seven-year-old Girl Scouts oh, to do their community service to pick on. up trash at the park. Come on, baby. So I had to go to school. I had to go to the what? school, nah, pick girl. up about six girls, 
throw them in my car, take them. And fortunately, there was two other moms that, that were helping out. And then we I went, was going to say we went to Pinkerton Park. They put on uh, the Department of Sanitation gave us those little grabby, those little long, uh, like grab things, whatever they're called, little they didn't grab give you arms. The pokers? Well, they're like pokers, yeah, but they're the the little suction cup grabbies, and uh, and little uh, lime colored vests and trash bags. And so I took all my little juvies around Pinkerton Park and uh, <laughs> and had them picking up trash. And uh, it was it was insane. I've never heard so much screaming in my life. So scratch that off the bucket list for me, which is always fun, whether I that wanted is not it or on not. My bucket list. No, you should have put them all in orange. It'd have been North, funnier. Oh, that, I know, and I should have worn like a, a white and black striped shirt and pants, <laughs> mm-hmm. which yeah, would have been even them all by their legs. No, exactly. it would have been way better. Yeah, it would have been way better. Like, but I want still, y'all to it's... clean up all this trash in this park, and while you're doing, I need you to drum up some Negro spirituals. <laughs> and go. <laughs> One, two, three, four. I'll, st- I'll start the clapping. And go. Let's go. Here we go. Let's go. <laughs> Somebody think about some hard times, but it's gonna be all right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> exactly exactly Uh, (laughs) so that was fun (laughs) sorry chris Uh, love it i love making chris uncomfortable Mm -hmm. keep it up gabe just get what else you got what else you got exactly anyway um so no it was i was glad it was over but it was it was good the girls came back to our house and then all the parents picked up everybody and by then i i really wanted to pour myself a scotch of some sort but Uh, uh, it was it was mm-hmm. insane. Um, other than that, man, it's just, you know, same old, same old. On the gaming front, I got to say, I'm in a funk. I haven't turned Dog on the PlayStation it. for about three what? weeks. You got Spider-Man sitting there. How you in a funk? I got Spider-Man sitting there, and I'm just like, meh, right now. Oh. I don't know why. I'm what? just in this, like, I'm, I don't know. I've just been like, eh, eh. Hmm. So, so I've been on kind of like a, you're not having an urge to start Spider-Man is what you're saying. I'm not. Yeah, I just no. it's not that I'm just I haven't had an urge to pop on the PS4. So I don't know what's going on. I don't I, I don't know what's happening. I'm like, I, I want to start Spider-Man, but I'm like, I got to learn new controls. And like the other I, problem, though, is that the, <laughs> is that the puppy is is getting up early and so kind of keeping and staying up. So like trying to gain so, so with the Lauren puppy. dealing with that. Yeah, right. So, <laughs> so, you know, having the puppy up there and just trying to play, like it, it happened for a little bit in New Dawn. And I was like, yeah, this is okay. And she finally went back to sleep, but I don't know. We'll see. So I'm in a meh. Hopefully I'll, I'll get Well, let me too. encourage you with this. I've been in a mm. meh before. I think everybody's yep. been mm-hmm. in a meh. Yeah, I've been oh, yeah. before. I've yeah, been however, before too. there's been times mm-hmm. where I was like, man, let me just start this game Yes. And just see. And I'm not saying it'll definitely happen. It's going to happen. Don't worry. I will say no. with Spider-Man, it is a very good chance that right once you get in it, you'll be like, ooh, ooh, yeah, ooh. And yeah. so. Yeah, oh, I know. If you, you will probably start Spider-Man and just do that first sequence after the very first cutscene, And you'll be like, all right, mm-hmm. we're down. Oh, yep. I was I, would, I was in just with the loading, like the start screen. I'm like, oh, my gosh, he looks incredible. <laughs> And well, then that you was it. in what, enough to yeah. pick it what up happened? and hit it. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. No, I yeah, no, I know, I know. Oh. So I've it's weird. Like I've been on this like HBO series kick. So of course I've been watching Game of Thrones. I bit I like got caught up with Barry and I watched a few uh of the Deuce, and it's just I, I don't know. I've just been kind of enjoying that, but I'm like, I know I need to play this. I know I'm gonna love this. I know I'm gonna go That's for the, the hard platinum part. on this. Yeah. I yeah. just have yeah. and you know, I did this two years ago when we ha- were living with uh, my in-laws, and I remember t- talking about it too. I just had this funk because I was about to start uh, Horizon, I think, and so the same thing happened. So I'll get mm-hmm. over it. I'm sure I'll be playing it by this weekend, and, and it'll be great. But that's that's just kind of been my meh. Uh, that yeah. and Clash Royale, and I'm done. <laughs> that and Clash Royale. <laughs> uh, Chris McCracken. Yes. Yes. Tell us about it. Uh, so I as well had a very good week, not quite as oh, busy nice. as, as, as Tim's, well, all the stuff that went on with his, <laughs> uh, but this past weekend we celebrated my, my obviously mother's day, but also my mom's birthday. They're always very close to each other. Hey. So we kind of combined oh, them together. Nice. Plus my, uh, my brothers, uh, and my sister came over and nieces and nephews and whatnot. And so we got to spend a lot of good time with them. So that was a lot of fun. Um, we were trying to play, we wanted to play some drawful, 
but my sister's PlayStation 4 was doing some weird stuff. So I ended up doing like tech support for about 30 minutes just trying oh, to nice, get the thing. Nice. I ended up having to reinitialize the thing and completely re rebuild it. Ugh. And then that's what, so she had to re log into everything. But luckily, I mean, mm. everything that she has pretty much is stored in the cloud. She doesn't have very many games, or her son, I guess I should say, doesn't have many games where he actually saves things locally. So, yeah. it, like, he plays Fortnite, like, 90% of the time. So, everything in there is in the cloud. So, it, it really wasn't that big of a deal once I finally got it working. But it was going to be a huge bummer if I couldn't get it working. And I felt really bad, even though, you know, I had right. nothing to do with it. I was like, man, I really don't want your PlayStation 4 to have bit the dust. So, good things. I got it all set up and uh, had a good time with all of the family. I got to go hang out with Mr. Nathan Thomas. He is Ooh, in town. Oh, nice. Yeah, I hung out with him. A, uh, shoot, I can't even remember. What, I think it was last year um, he came into town for work. He's back in town again for he's doing taking this class and gonna, at the end of the week going to do this like certification test uh, that he has to do for his job. So mm -hmm. he he hit me up and he's like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm going to be in town during the middle of the week. I'm going to be like in class all day long. And then I have this test and everything. He said, but I have Sunday night and I have Saturday night. Okay. He's like, well, let's do Sunday night because I know I can do that one. And then maybe we can act, do, just do it again on Saturday night. So we, meet, mm -hmm. we met up and we had dinner and just chatted for like an hour and a half. Just nice like picking right back up like the last time he was here and just it's just a lot That's of fun awesome. to spend some time with him um have, mm -hmm. a, have a few good beers and just chat about what all's going on and everything and he's really um he's really interested in getting a tesla somewhere down the road so i got to show him mine a little bit we didn't go for a ride but i, I kind of showed him all the different hoopla about it and everything mm -hmm. and and all the different stuff and so that was a lot of fun had a really good time spending out with him this week on monday through today wednesday um we were shooting on location, uh, doing some video projects, and on the middle of the, the middle day Tuesday, so I have to grab the van from work to load it up with all of our gear to take it to the shoot, and then I have to do the same thing on Wednesday to bring it back. But that middle day, I was just able to go straight there, and mm -hmm. so I actually got mm -hmm. to take my dog with me and have the dog on set. So that, that was, was cool so just awesome. to be able to nice. yeah, just see a, let her run around and meet everybody and, and everything like that. It was a lot of fun. That a lot of other people do that occasionally throughout uh, whenever they're having video shoots or photo shoots on set. And so I was like, all right, I'm going to, it's my turn. I'm going to bring my, my daughter to work day. And so that's what I did. And that was a lot of fun. Um, on the, oh, one other thing I want to mention. I watched the, uh, the Raising Kratos documentary. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. On, yeah. Uh, PlayStation's YouTube channel is where it is. I mm -hmm. don't know if it's, it might be elsewhere as well. It is so good. That's awesome. Yeah, I can't very, wait to get into that. I, I, the only knock I could say again is I do think they maybe could have trimmed it a little bit. It does get to mm. the point where it feels like a few areas low a little bit. It's like, well, they probably could have edited that down. But outside of that, yeah. all the information that you get, and I, I don't remember if I ever mentioned this on the show, but I had tweeted at Corey like right before uh, yeah. God of War 4 dropped. I told him, I was like, hey, you know, at the end of God of War 3, when you beat it, one of the coolest like unlocks that I had ever seen before was that it unlocked this making of documentary of God of War three. And it, it, it shows them getting all prepped and getting the game ready and some behind the scenes of like voiceover stuff and everything. And then it culminates mm -hmm. with them showing the first uh, viewing of it at E3, the year that that game launched. Oh, and so I, told cool. I was like, man, that was just really awesome. I was like, I know this is really late. Cause this was a, like a month or two before it dropped. It's like, I'm sure it's too late in the game now, but it'd be really awesome if this happened again for God of War four. And it didn't, happened for god of war 4 at least not in the same way because there wasn't an unlock when i beat the game but then they dropped this one about a year after the game dropped and i was like oh my gosh it's just so good nice a lot of That's really awesome. interesting information uh behind the scenes and just to see like the stress that it puts on and the turmoil and like because you know he didn't he's he took god of war in a totally different direction Corey did and it's like mm -hmm. you don't know if it's gonna work That's you right. really don't i mean it's just it's so cool to see how like, about an axe so cool yeah yeah, just to see all the stuff that they went through and then just to know that on the other end, like, man, this is all going to work out and then just kind of see yeah. a little bit of that as well. So That's that, awesome. That was really, really cool. I highly recommend yeah, that I can't wait. you guys go and watch that or anybody out there in the community if you just got some time. I think it's just under two hours, so it's a little long, uh, but you can even watch it in installments. You know, if it's on YouTube, you just watch it a little bit and yep. the next time you come back, it usually remembers where you stopped. So mm -hmm. I would definitely recommend it. On the gaming front... I did jump back into Sekiro a very, very little bit of, uh, the yeah. other day. Man, I don't know if it's just me. Again, I never played the Souls games. I've only played Bloodborne. And Bloodborne wasn't easy, but I feel like I got my head wrapped around it. This one's way harder to get my head wrapped around. Ah, dog. Oh, really? wow. And I don't even have, like, Shoot. all of the crazy... Because you can upgrade your... So um, when you get the prosthetic arm or whatever, it has, like, a harpoon on it right when you get it. 
And as you find certain things out in the world, I don't even know exactly what they are. You can take them back to, a, I think, a, a merchant of some sort, and they can mm-hmm. upgrade your arm. And I, I assume that's going to give me other abilities. Like I know from just from the trailers back when the game was launching, I saw the the main guy had like a kind of like the shield looking thing that he would use to block stuff. I'm assuming that's an upgrade that you can do down the road. I just, man, just with the sword, I'm like, oh my gosh, having to figure out their tails. And, and I went through some growing pains like this in Bloodborne as well. Um, hmm. But I used the axe in Bloodborne and I did from the very beginning. And I like that because it gave me two range attacks. It let me hit them from afar a little bit where I could escape a little bit better. And then yeah. when I had them on the ropes, I could go in and shrink it down and go and like finish them off. At the moment, all I have is a samurai sword, and it's like, it is what it is. So I mm. need, definitely need to spend some more time with it. I feel like I'll kind of get my head wrapped around it. But, man, it's just in the initial spurt. I don't remember struggling this much to get up to speed early on in Bloodborne as I did this mm. game. Wow. It still looks great, though. looks really pretty, and it's still a very interesting, seems really like an interesting thing. I mean, just like Bloodborne and kind of the Souls games, there's a story, but there's not really. I mean, there kind of is, but you kind of got to just figure it out as you go. Um, yeah. So it's definitely intriguing and, and mysterious in that sense. Um, uh, but I'm really looking forward to getting back to it. But man, if it's if it stays too much on the struggle bus, I may have to bounce earlier than I planned to because I wow. already knew I was not going to go to the end of the road with this one. <laughs> right, um, right. There was there's somebody else that I follow on Twitter. They they had beat this game recently, and the la- granted they died a bunch, but they streamed their last the last boss fight, I guess, and I guess he has like phases. It took him 11 hours and 11 oh, hours oh to beat him. Oh my gosh. Wow. I was like, man, yeah, there ain't no way I'm getting to the end of this, but I just want to ha- enjoy as much of the ride as I can while I go. So yeah. Dog. I will report it. back hopefully next week uh, as I get some more time. And wow. then uh, probably I have jumped in a little bit more Apex, a little bit more Overwatch, the, the staples, but the other game that I've kind of, as I mentioned last week, I've been playing a heck of a lot of Hearthstone. No, just get right so back great, in man. there. I mean, it's I'm so just excited. so much fun that's to so get cool. right back in there. Um, I'm. Let me make this very clear, though, in case I was giving anybody the wrong impression. I am not okay. good at Hearthstone. <laughs> <laughs> I am still you don't have to. bad at the game. Uh, and there's definitely a lot of cards that I'm seeing. It's like, man, I have no idea. I, I got into a match the other day, and this guy's doing something, and then this respawns this, and then this flies in, and that happens. And I just it went from like 30 down to Five and I was like, I, I don't understand at all what's going on. I'm just gonna get this. <laughs> those are such the frustrating destroyed. games. Yeah, yeah. but it, still, even with that, it's still a lot of fun. I'm really, really enjoying being back in there. Are you a classic card kind of a guy? Like, are, do you still use a lot of the classics, or are you finding there's some newer cards that definitely are the way to go? Well, I, I do use mostly the classic cards because that's most of what I have. Um, exactly. But yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I have. I have few because there were a, a few of the previous expansions where I would buy like a pack of 50 or whatever. So I definitely have cards right. throughout a bunch of different ones. But there's since the last time that I played of any real uh, amount of the game, I think there's been like four or five different expansions. So there's a big mm-hmm. amount of cards that I don't even know what they are and how they work. Yep. And there's new mechanics in it. There was a mechanic called so there was like um, one called Overkill. I had no idea. Yep. what that, I had to YouTube that. Like, what does this even mean? I don't understand. Hmm. And then I had to figure out that one. And now I got my head wrapped around that and just a bunch of d- other little things. I've been jumping in and watching Jared Orr play a few times because he's doing oh, nice. the, he's doing the uh, uh, the ladder, I guess, or whatever they call it, the ranked play. And he's down hmm. at like level 10 or whatever. And you start at 25 Holy and smokes. he goes all the way down to one. Like, so, yeah. So I'm like, man, obviously I don't know what I'm doing. I need to watch Jared Orr play a few games. <laughs> Wow. So what that guy's doing is okay. That card, all right, crap. Yeah, that one, exactly there we go. Now I'm gonna be a beast. <laughs> yep. so, yeah, but that that is it for me, fellas. Nice, that is amazing, Mister Patillo. I like it. Yeah. Hi. How are you, man? We made it. Did you survive? We made it. We made it. <laughs> we we made it. Oh. We made it. That's right. Jenny is back in town. <laughs> I'm no longer a single parent. I held it down from <laughs> Monday to Saturday. Yeah, and and it, I'm not gonna say it was a struggle, but it's it's a different muscle. Mm. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It's like if somebody said, uh, "Hey, I need you to uh, do a handstand and walk across a room ten times." You're like, "Ooh, mm-hmm. yep. this is gonna take a minute." Yep, it feels like. I mean, that. I'll try, but it'll take a little bit. It, that's right. That's right. So everybody mm. ate every day. Uh, oh, hey. The house didn't burn down. Yep, and uh, Mara made it to school every day. So that was hey. the big things I was checking off the list. We tried. The only thing that that happened that, that sucked a little bit was, I don't know if I talked about it, but like Monday, Milo had like a a sniffly nose that kind of kept him up all night. Oh no! So we were going back and forth, and then Friday, the end of the week, when I'm watching them, 
he starts mm-hmm. throwing up out of no place. Uh, and I was like, oh, no, nah, Doc, you got to be kidding. And I mean, right? throwing up like at 11, what? then yeah, at like, three, ugh. then oh, at my you know, six. Then at, you know what I'm saying? And so like oh. I had to make a pallet on the floor, just kind of like sleep next to him. And, uh, and that poor little dude. Oh, it was the worst. And he's just like pitiful and hating life. And I'm trying not to get mm-hmm. throw up everywhere. And. The kids are <laughs> running from him. And so, me, you know, I mean, it's so, now it's, are you I'm assuming because you've d- been through this before that like throw up doesn't bother you anymore, does it? No, it doesn't like, get it, me weak in the stomach, but it's just like nice. It just smells like, terrible uh, and you're sleeping yeah, right yeah. next to the smell. And it's yeah, so, right. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, so, and, you know, yeah, he's yeah. our little guy. He's our littlest one. He's two years old. So anytime you watch a two year old throw up, it's like, oh, man, I'm sorry, but you have no idea what's mm. going on. Yeah, that um, sucks. So that was that was rough, but everybody's on the mend. Everybody's doing better. Good. Was, I think he, he he didn't get start acting right really until let's see, that was Friday. He threw up all day Saturday and into oh, Sunday, wow. into Mother's Dude. Day. Oh, so Mother's Day, <laughs> this is what sucks. This right. Mother's Day, Milo was throwing up. Last Mother's Day, Jenny was throwing up. <laughs> and so that's two Mother's Day in a row that we didn't yes. get to like celebrate Mother's Day because somebody Damn. was throwing up. Oh, so wow. anyway, we're all on the mend. We're back to normal. I'm home this week. I'm home next week. I'm home the week after that. Then I Ooh. head out to L.A. Uh, and we start getting it slowly cracking again uh, as we're heading out on this um, DC talk cruise and, and stuff like that in June. And Will so, your next leg be pretty similar to what you did uh, earlier this year? No. So it doesn't get busy, busy like that until like October, November. Okay. R- really late October, November. Toby's finally taking a year this year. He's slowing it down. He's doing some travel with his wife. And so uh, for those that don't know, I work for a guy named Toby Mack. He's a singer. And so we're slowing it down this year. So that's really nice. So it's kind of like a refresh year he he just got back from yeah. france he went to france with his wife they're going to israel later this year so just like oh wow it's the first time like he so deserves it sorry this is just side note but Absolutely. he so no, no, deserves right. it and he never does stuff like this so mm. i'm like as one of his buddies i'm just so glad to see him and his wife cool. getting this time because they dedicate so much to so many other people i mean yeah. you know the man's got five kids you know he's got one mm-hmm. in a wheelchair and so like he's just like in serve mode all the time and so sometimes from the outside looking in you're like oh toby mac and he's on stage and he's selling out arenas but then back at home you don't realize like the work that's getting put in and so right as somebody as close as i am to him i'm just glad to see him uh doing his thing and getting to and and i feel like his his patterns like this is all awesome i feel like his patterns were like go on to like major tour quick break album major tour yeah, that's what winter it felt jam like. yeah. major tour <laughs> yeah. album it's like yeah. he was going he was going on and on for a while so i'm i'm thrilled for him that's awesome yes i'm so happy for that's, him so yeah that's good uh man on the gaming front again because i had the playstation in the living room i didn't get into secure like i wanted to so i just moved the playstation back out to the shed tonight um but i mean it's just been apex overwatch has got me sucked back in been playing with ed and some of these guys, Frankie, who's new to the community. Um, yeah. And so that's been like super fun, fun. It's funny because like we've been playing and I haven't been wanting to lose. So I've been playing Baptiste a little bit, but then I feel mm-hmm. like I'm falling back on Moira and May a, a lot. Yeah. And Moira, like, I just love playing her. She's just a yeah, fun character to play, man. So yeah, yeah. I've been really enjoying that. Um. I've been really enjoying, just as a side note, too, these doggone playoffs, man, have been awesome in the NBA. It's a do- totally different kind of marriage oh, I thought to the you games. meant Overwatch League. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, really? I did watch Overwatch League on TV the other day when it was shown on, I think I tweeted out, I was like, hey, I'm choosing Overwatch over something on ESPN. Yes. So <laughs> that was that was fun to watch. I, love, I, yeah. I was digging that. And uh, again, I think they are dialing that in so well that I mm-hmm. think if you... If you had no idea about the game, I still don't think yet it would be interesting. But yeah. I think if you know anything about the game, then it's interesting. Does that make sense? Yeah, I talked to my sister. We we video chatted because she sent me a question because 
during the they were watching the game. Yes. Mm-hmm. And they know nothing about the game. So she's yeah. like, what is going on? <laughs> so, <laughs> I know. Once I kind of, you know, like, oh, on this one, they're trying to push this to the end of the of the map. And if they're near it, it moves. And she's like, oh, OK. And then she could finally see. Yes. Um, what was happening. And so I think the one thing that they're skipping and I feel like a lot of people do this. Some people feel like the people watching are already in on the joke, for lack right. of a better term. And so right. I heard them say multiple times, this is a control map or, you know, this is a, you know, I forget what, what's the other kind they yeah. call it. Like an escort. An escort map. And so what I find interesting is that basketball, baseball, football are almost self-explanatory just as you watch them. Right. Overwatch is not. And so you almost need to over explain, which I know sounds elementary, but like if you're getting a slot on ABC, it's now's the time to be a little elementary so that people can oh, yeah. join in you on the educate uh, the people. Exactly. exactly. If it's just on Twitch, then go ahead and have all the deep talk. I still think you need the deep talk, by the way. I'm just saying right. they might want to explain it a little bit more for the lay person that has no idea what's going on. What yeah. does control mean? You know what I'm saying? Like, if, even right. if they ran through it quick, hey, this is a control map is where they have to get on a point, get to 100 percent and blah, 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 blah. That's what they're trying to do. And they move on to the thing. You know, it's only an hour long yeah. show, so it's not like they have to do that over and over and over again. Uh, and yeah. they could do little pop ups too, like little text pop ups that explain some of that. Stuff That's too, a good idea, people, too. Yeah. If people, yeah, hey, hire pop me, up man. Video. I'll, I'll take care of it. Exactly. Right? Like, whoop. Mm-hmm. And I was yep. watching the matches all day, and definitely the one the, the the one match that was broadcast on ABC, they definitely did more explaining than usual. But I think they could go even more, yes, and explain right. even more. That's right. Nice. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So I just um, don't. I mean, how, how? Shoot, I hear what you're saying, and I don't. I don't disagree. Mm-hmm. But it's like outside of the because I, I remember last season. I don't think I've seen it any this season. But they used to do, um, especially at the very beginning of Overwatch League, they would do. Oh, this the first time like a control map comes up. There would be this quick little breakdown of what a control map means and how yeah. it, how it functions. And then They'll the same thing for that Pele, 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 yeah. yeah, I didn't happen so, to see that when I was watching it. But I'm just saying, outside, like if you remove that, I feel like for someone who doesn't know anything about it, like they're made, they may not understand or it may take them a little bit to understand the difference between a healer and a DPS and a tank and all these things. Yeah. But yeah. how do you? I, I think don't it's feel what like you Tim can just realistically said, like, explain all that stuff. I think th- I, I think there's, yeah. I think your cryon game can be on point. Sorry, the cryon machine was this old. Anyway, the, the pop ups would work <laughs> perfect. Sorry, I didn't want to explain what a cryon was. <laughs> The cryon. It, cryon. Isn't that sorry. that little waxy thing that all the kids no, in kindergarten t- color with? When you watch a music video and the little name <laughs> pops up in the exactly. bottom corner, that's called a cryon. So uh, um, okay. I don't know why it's called I that. I call that a pop-up. Exactly. So, But what, what Tim said, I think if you did pop-ups like that, had those at yeah. the ready, throughout, I think that yeah, would even really Throughout the help. time, yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Especially if they're in the middle of it and then you can just pop that up while the, the, while the guys are going. Announcing. Give me a, for instance, like what would it say? If he said, if he said, Oh, and they're coming in uh, with heavy deep DPS characters, then it just pops us as DPS means Boom. damage per second. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Even yep. if like they would have almost like a little baseball card that would pop and be like, Oh, the, right now we're watching Anna and then a little Anna card healer. Uh, can heal yeah, others just with this, stats. you know, just yeah, kind of yeah, a, yeah. a really quick. We yeah. just need to send this episode to Overwatch League <laughs> so they can take. <laughs> just saying. come on, we can nah, produce this. I, Let's I go. Just, I just, I, I don't know. I mean, because even your example, which I, I know I'm taking a bit literal, but even that saying DPS to a lay person who doesn't understand, like that's still not going to make sense to them. What does that mean? Damage? Yes, right. damage per second. But how does what does that mean? This character is. I just, I think because of the nature of the game and how fast it moves and how fast they have that's to switch the thing. between them, yep. I just yeah. don't think. I think all that would get lost in the shuffle. Yeah. I, just, yeah, I think it's a hard nut to game. crack is, is what I'm getting at. I, I agree yeah. that more can be done. And I think that they do a good, they could do a really good job of having segments that break down stuff even more in between the matches, but then you're reliant on the people to watch to halftime, you know? Right. I mean, I, I right. get, I get where you're coming from and I just don't, I don't know how to eloquently do that. Yeah. I know, but I feel like it's going to suffer if they can't figure that out because everything yeah. else, mm-hmm. every other sport is so self-explanatory. Now, you're not always going to explain uh, what offsides is in hockey, and there's definitely things that, that happen in sporting events that. that you have no idea what that means. Um, mm-hmm. But I feel like get the ball in the net is easy to understand yeah. where you might not know, so this payload is doing what now? Oh, they have to stay around that thing for it to move? Or, you right. know what I'm saying? Or mm-hmm. what's the counter? Oh, 
if the other team captures it, th- now theirs is counting. It's just not as self-explanatory as I think regular sports are that you would see on an ABC, TNT, CBS. And they could also put like a bulleted point graphic at before the game starts of, you know, just the bullet points of this is what has to happen. This is how well, that's you what win. I, that's what this I was is... saying is that a lot of times, it, definitely last year, I haven't seen it much as this year, but they would say before a match starts, like the first map, we're going to start on control. There would be a quick little cinematic yes. to explain like right. what a control map is and I how think you idea. achieve the point mm-hmm. and all that's that kind of perfect. stuff. I think right. they need to do exactly it for every map. Do. I agree. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? I think they could definitely do that for every map and that would absolutely help the with understanding mm-hmm. the objective part that's right i just feel like you're gonna clutter things up way too much if you're trying to add in little right. pop-ups like a dps is this a tank means this a healing this is these are the well, healing yeah, characters and, and and those could be little value added pieces that if, if somebody's I think those gonna things read it you could get you could figure out once you understand the objective right. i think you could pick up on the other things i uh, granted i know i'm a gamer I but so. I, I feel like that stuff becomes very self-evident a little bit in mm-hmm I, I mean, I disagree with you. If you're saying a control and then you say healer, that has nothing to do with each other. I'm, I'm just saying I think they should no, explain I'm it saying... one time. And then you could say, like Ed was saying, you know, if you're watching somebody and it says Anna, healer, blah, 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 blah. I don't think you need to explain what a healer is. I think people would know that. But not knowing that Anna is a healer at all would, I think, would help to know that. And the challenge is also going to be the announcers are going to get more amped as the action gets more fierce. So they're not going to quickly go into any type of explanation. They're going to talk about what they're seeing because it's happening so fast. Yeah. yeah. So there has to be that delicate and that balance. that thing is rapid fire, boy. Like if, if you watch that mm-hmm. and you watch basketball, Woo. this sounds like the guys in basketball are in slow motion. When you <laughs> right. hear That's what I'm the saying. Yeah. Because the talking. game is so fast paced and there's so much going on. There comes That's why you have the where, cards. A point where, yep. I just I, I like my idea. Show, I'm running. I would I'm love for you to it. show me an example because I'm not able to see how. It, I, I agree, it's a need. I don't understand how it could actually work. Well, Chris, and not detract so, from the so they switch the, the camera to Anna's character. Yeah, and a little card just pops up with her picture and her. It's like a slide up from the bottom stats, of the screen. Like, yeah, it's not. It's not like some big rocket science. Like it's just like a little info card about her, like Ed was saying, and then it goes away. Or it stays up, yeah, it you would, know what I'm saying? Yeah, it would slide up from the bottom of your TV screen, fill the full, like, full Almost width. Almost like a lower third would yeah, tell you exactly, about anything. A lower, exactly, a lower third. It would just have a brief explanation. All the while, you can still watch, and you can still read it uh, below if you wanted to. Yeah, All right, not, new releases this <laughs> week. I'm not sold. Sold. Sorry. <laughs> I'm just not going to find... You know, and maybe it'll get to the point someday where you don't need to explain because like right now yes. they don't explain foot. I still don't know what the guys with the chains and football do, but they, I, they never explain it, but mm-hmm. you don't need to know, you know, but, uh, so maybe one day we'll get to the point where everyone's like, oh yeah, that's how you play Overwatch. Maybe that'll happen. I think that's honestly that's the only reason happen. esports is even starting to make a dent now is because so many more people play video games that the more yep. you play a game, the more you just innately kind of start to understand the game, not right. every aspect of it, but you understand the fundamentals and yes. then you can pick up on things as you go. Yep. I think that's the only reason esports has made a dent at all so mm-hmm. far. This is a whole new frontier. I mean, we're, yeah, it we're going is. into this new age. So there's going to be these little quirks that they'll, they'll figure out, but I think you're right. I think there, but the problem is there's going to be a combination, especially if you're on primetime television, there's going to be a combination of people who are going to prime time to watch it and are gamers and know the game. And then there's going to be mm-hmm. people who are, who are going to stumble upon it and have no clue what's going on. Right. So there oh, has yeah. to be that fine line between the education process and the excitement of, of watching your team that you know yeah. about because you know this game. So Especially early I mean, on. they got some, yeah, they got some challenges, but I'm, I'll be really curious what the ratings are like uh, moving forward with this. I think, it, I think it'll be cool. And I think it's though- just going to keep going up and up. Even if someone Ryan. doesn't know what's going on, like Sarah, just l- because the, the casters get so hyped and they're talking so fast, Sarah actually likes to listen to them because it's entertaining. Mm-hmm. You yeah, know? And, sure. and so even if they don't know what's going on, if they stumble upon it, they might hang out for 15 minutes or so just to hear these crazy guys go crazy. <laughs> all right. That's funny. Um, that's all I got. Router. Yes, sir. You got it. Mm-hmm. Well, let's do it! All right, new release 
releases this week. Darkwood for the PS4, Switch, and Xbox One. A Plague Tale Innocence, PC, PS4, Xbox One. Mm. I saw some gameplay of that on a YouTube channel. It kind of looks kind of cool a little bit. I don't know. Say it the seems, name of it again. Say the name of it. A, a Plague Tale Innocence. Yeah, I thought that I, yeah. I've only I haven't seen the actual gameplay. I've just seen some screenshots and this everything. It, it, looks, it looks it looks really clean and like it's got yeah. like there's plague, there's like rats everywhere, and it's it it's kind of reminding me a little bit of uh 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 dishonored, but it doesn't have that style, but it's mm-hmm. kind of like that s- same kind of like time period ish time. Mm-hmm. But it, yeah, I saw a little bit of gameplay on a YouTube channel. It's got really got, good reviews. I got a lot of uh yeah. I got a lot of uh, Hellblade vibes from it, just from the, oh, the nice. style of the way of the game. Not necessarily because oh, of yeah. the same time periods or anything. but Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's cool. Um, as we mentioned, Rage 2 for the PC, PS4, and Xbox One. Rock of Ages 2, bigger and bolder for the Switch. Mm. Uh, Bubsy, Paws on Fire for the PC, PS4, and Switch. Castlevania Anniversary Collection for the PC, PS4, Xbox One, and Switch. We've got some DLC for the Division 2 Operation Dark Hours Raid. Yeah. Project Nimbus Complete Edition for the Switch. And Guilty Gear for the PS4 and Switch. And there's also a Guilty Gear 20th Anniversary Edition for the Switch all coming up this Friday. Hmm. There you go. Uh, yeah, that is it for me. Back to you, gentlemen. Christopher. Yeah, so um, this week we found out from Mr. Jeff Keighley, who always has a big hand in the stuff that's happening at E3, Mm -hmm. um, that Netflix is going to be in attendance at this year's E3. That's correct. Specifically, he's going to be, excuse me, he's going to be on one of the panels at the E3 Coliseum. Um, Fortunately, Gabe and I got to go to one of those little panels uh, a couple of E3s ago, and we all went as a group to see Kojima talk. Um, But they're going to be talking there, and they're going to be sharing, quote, updates and news about its plans in the gaming space. When I read that title, I was like, holy crap, what, what is Netflix going to do in the gaming space? Mm-hmm. And then they went on a little bit, and the title of their panel is actually Bringing Your Favorite Shows to Life, Developing Netflix Originals into Video Games. Yeah. Which I, that the, makes the most sense, because when I first saw that, I was like, oh, are they going to start pulling some like Stadia stuff and also streaming gaming? Because that would be crazy. Right. This makes a little bit more sense based on the, the fact that you know they are in the video space, and they've been doing a great job with that. and. We know that they did Minecraft story mode. We know that they've got that Castlevania series that they've done. They're making the Netflix or the Witcher series, or excuse yep. me, the Witcher series for yep. Netflix. Witcher series. Um, I think that they they also did that, which isn't necessarily video game related, but kind of gamified. Um, they did that Bandersnatch thing that was kind of like a game that you can play by watching it in a way. Yeah, yeah the interactive Black game. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I found this kind of interesting. One that they would even rather than just making video game content into original content for Netflix they're actually having a panel at E3 where they're talking about doing that and what all is involved with that. I just thought that was kind of a cool little idea that they were going to be expanding on that. And then it makes me wonder like what kind of other things could they possibly be working on? And is there anything that you guys would want for them to work on? Come on, because, Uncharted series. Come on, no. Uncharted series. I, I'm, I'm actually kind of there with you because I, I don't know Absolutely. that Uncharted would work as a, as I mean, not that it wouldn't work, but I feel like it could be better in little 30 minute increments, like maybe oh, one yeah. season. I can totally see that. Oh, you guys are talking about the opposite, taking video games into Netflix originals, not Netflix yes. originals into video games like the thing says. Right. Right. Yes. I, th- I think we all got clickbaited with that title. We were all like, wait, what's going on? And then they, they kind of yeah. changed yeah. it up a little see, bit. In I the thought article. it was kind of saying that we might be seeing more of the Telltale stuff or more of right. the Bandersnatch stuff. Not, Which would be cool. Not the other right. way around. I, you know what? Yeah. I'm up in the air with it. I don't know if if choose your own adventure is that exciting or if you have something more akin, and I know this takes a little bit more, but something more mm-hmm. akin to a quantum break, you know what I'm saying, where mm-hmm. the television yeah. show is a big part of the video game that you're you're playing. Yeah. Well, it's funny, too, because I uh, actually started the, uh, the, the Bandersnatch episode of Black Mirror because yeah. I had heard so much about it. And I got bored. I, I really, you know, because yeah. really, when you're playing a Telltale game, you're still at least, yeah, you're choosing dialogue, but you're also moving the character around yeah, and you're walking exploring. around. And now it's just kind of like you're watching a show. Oh wait, where's the remote? I gotta. Okay, oh okay. Um, and you just kind of, 
I don't know. I, it didn't it didn't grab me the way that I thought it was going to. I was really curious to give it a try. You know, it's funny. The first thing I thought of was that awful game we watched you play on Twitch, Ed. Oh, oh the, yes. Yeah. What oh, was yes. that called? With the Which, crazy uh, acting? Yeah. Yes. Because yeah, like that. when I think of somebody sticking their toe in the, Now, I know Netflix has a lot of money, but when I think yes. of somebody sticking their toe in the water, I always think of the first couple being awful. Like once they mm-hmm. like open it up oh, yeah. a little bit more. Yeah, and so yeah. I was like, man, if this is just a bunch of choose your own adventure, and I didn't play any Telltale things through Netflix, um, but all I could think about was like old laser disc, you know, Space Ace, or you know, where you like there's that hiccup when you choose the thing. It's like, oh, sorry, we have to get to this track right. now and play this out. Right. And so I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm like, I'm a little on the fence when you say developing Netflix originals into video games. Yeah, that just seems, I mean, yeah. how many video games that are based on a movie or a TV show were, were, were really good? I mean, that's a rare thing, and it just... Well, I think both are rare, right? Any, any, yeah. Yeah, any uh, like, the thing is good because it's the thing. Like, if you try to turn, unless you took a whole world, like, wow, and skinned it to Game of Thrones, a Game of Thrones game is going to be extremely hard to do and live up to the expectation of people that love the show. And right. so it feels like anything yes. that happens like that, just like we talked about Sonic and every almost every video game movie is hard to do because it can't live up to the expectation of the hours and hours you poured into the game that you love. Mm-hmm. And so I was, yeah, I was really interested about this. Witcher's going to be a real big test, I will say. I think it's going to be a, a big test to see if it, you know how successful it can be. Yeah. I, I just yeah. can't think of a lot of... Netflix originals that I'm like I'd love to see that as a video game. I would love to play one day at a time. Man, I'm <laughs> right. You know, the, 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 where's that great Fuller House? Yeah, let's play they've that. Got, <laughs> they've got great content as far as shows and movies, yeah. but, but as far as making it into a video game, I I'm curious, really only, curious to see what they do. The only other thing that I can think of, um, and it wasn't even necessarily them making it, but there was that wasn't Telltale going to do like. Stranger Something things. based on Stranger Things. Yeah, and didn't yeah. they have? Was there a Stranger Things mobile game? Yeah, I believe there was or is yeah. maybe. But I, I know, know that Netflix. I mean, Netflix and Telltale. I think we're supposed to be partnering up to make that. Yes. Uh, the episodic thing happen, which yeah, I, I guess so. could have fallen to Netflix in Telltale's yeah. demise. Yeah. You know. I mean, I, I just know that. It, granted, I, I know that's not necessarily what they're saying here, but. I could to- with as much money as Netflix is moving around. Granted, I understand making original video content is, is very expensive to do, especially the names that they get involved mm-hmm. with a lot of these things. It just seems like they wouldn't be that far off from like just having a game studio, like a, a division, yeah. kind of like how Amazon has Amazon Game Studios, and just make some little. I, I would think that they would start out by just doing some mobile stuff, but yeah. I could totally see them doing it. You know, it's funny. No, I would no, think I it'd be really the- fast. Almost it feels like to me if they if they did that. But go ahead, Tim. I was just going to say, I kind of want them to stay in their lane, like stay with the original content. You know, if you want to create some series mm-hmm. out of video games, great. But I wouldn't want to flip it around. There, we've got too many other services for that, in I my actually, opinion. Yeah, I, like, I mean, I, in a way, I kind of agree. I kind of think they should stick it with it the way that it, I was saying when I was trying to like flip it on its head where – yeah, take video games and make them into video content. Because yeah, because that's like your with sandbox the Witcher and everything like that. Mm-hmm. Exactly, that's your sandbox, and maybe something will stick, and it'll it'll help. A, it'll help enhance the game more, and maybe you'll get more game sales out of it. And B, you have a really great series on your hands, and it also appeals to the fans who have played the game. So that's why I'm like I'm definitely looking at Witcher. With you know, I'll be I'll definitely be watching that series because I played the mess out of that game, and I'm very curious how that's going to pan out. And if it stinks, then I'm like, okay, Netflix, you know, maybe we try something else one more time, but maybe we just don't touch video games. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let video games be video games. But you know, it, it's, it, it'll be, it, it's, it's a sandbox right now. So anything goes. Yeah. I can't put my finger on what it was about it, but there was just something that I just got a little, a little whiff of, wow, look how much money video games is making. I want some of that. Like you just kind of yes. had a little bit of that to it. That's I feel like always going to be the case. That. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Which exactly. I hate because I feel like it muddies the water a little bit. Yep. Yeah. Because oh, yeah. then you have big companies putting out subpar uh, content, and I think that that could, yes. that could be a problem. Um, one of the things this made me think was, and I pose this question to you guys: Do you think that we'll kind of look 
if you were to peer into the future, do you think there's going to be like five names at the top of Mount Entertainment that handle yeah. everything? Like yeah. Amazon will be Amazon. And so they've got Amazon Prime. They've got Amazon Games. And then you've got Netflix that does their thing and, and games. And then you have Google that does everything Google does and games. Mm-hmm. And then you have maybe Sony or Samsung that do everything and games and your refrigerator and, and all this. Do you think we'll kind of like in the future, it won't really be that many different names that are providing us entertainment. You know, Disney will be one of the names that will be oh. gaming and movies. And, you know, you just name them all. Yeah. You just totally name them all. That's the like, look at Disney with their acquisition of Fox. Holy cow. Yeah, and Hulu. Huge. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is huge. Yep. So like, I do they, think that they'll continue yeah. though. Like it will be the top, you know, five, six, whatever it is but they'll keep all their little brands underneath them. So that to the person who doesn't pay attention True. to that stuff, True. won't realize that, Oh, you mean Disney owns Fox and they own Hulu and they own, you know, ESPN yeah. and they own is like, they won't, they don't realize that yeah. all of that's uh, Yeah. Disney, they're all little sister you know? companies that, yeah. that may or may not brand it, but at least it, it caters to what you want to watch. Yeah. Or, I, but I agree. But, it'll be something crazy like that where there'll be like five people. Or five teams, yeah. you know. Yep. It's crazy that Disney doesn't have a gaming studio right now. That seems like something they would have done. Well, no, they had one, and they yeah, they yeah. Disney it. Interactive. They got rid of it. Yeah, oh, Disney Interactive. Right. That's combined. why Disney Infinity doesn't exist anymore because that was their internal team, and they they decided to get away from actually making the games and just partner with other people. That's how Sony got uh, Spider Man. Well, not how they got Spider Man, but that like they oh, teamed up right. specifically on the gaming yeah. side front of it. Interesting. Yeah. Yep, and yep, then Nintendo's yep. having this, uh, right. whatever that Avengers Alliance, Ultimate Alliance, something or something it, like that. It, to me, that's a that's the that might be a testament to Disney that they're staying in their lane. They know that there are so many other companies that can do gaming stuff. Like they have the money, they have the resources, they probably have yeah. the the talent to do so. But they're going to st- stick with what they do best. That's great. And maybe Netflix needs to do that, but I don't know. Yeah, maybe. It, it, so it's just, but you're right, man. Everybody wants a wants a piece of this video game pie because they know it's so <laughs> it's so successful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and what's funny is yep. Disney Infinity wasn't bad. No, no, not that's at all. It <laughs> a lot of people loved it, and so yeah. it's, it shows you the. I don't know if it's the foresight or the smarts that somebody was like, you know what, we we need to go ahead and step down. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's why people were so surprised when they said they weren't going to do it anymore. It's like, wait, what? Right. This is great. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. But the figurines. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, didn't that happen close to the Star Wars acquisition? That might have been part of it. Like, <laughs> All well, our money went we're to not gonna, buy Lucas Yeah, Arts. we're, we're going to kill this because we're going to get Star Wars. <laughs> Sorry, guys. See ya. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's crazy. So sticking with the movies. <laughs> why? <laughs> Mortal Kombat yes. is uh-huh. going to be making a, a its debut again. It's like third debut, I think, because I think there was a, the original movie in 95 and then like right. an awful Three. sequel or something like that. So they said pre-production is going to start on this movie later this month. This is supposed to be May. Um, yeah. And uh, getting south, shot in South Australia. Mm-hmm. Which is uh, pretty cool. I, I guess the, the South Prime Minister is uh, South Australia's Premier Stephen Marshall. I don't know what that means. It was a conference, a uh, press conference by South Australia's Premier Stephen Marshall, and gotcha. he he uh, was saying that hey, this is going to bring a bunch of money in. It's going to bring seventy million dollars into our economy, Ooh. which is I think roughly. 40 something million, 48 million, 40 in America. cents, <laughs> yeah. 48 million dollars, still millions and millions. Right. Right. Yep. That's million. That's millions yeah. more than I have. Yep. Now, mm-hmm. this is where I want to get somebody explain something to me. Maybe, maybe Edna can break it down. I don't know always the difference between what a, I know what a director does. Mm-hmm. I don't always know what a producer does behind the director. Yeah. Because it's getting produced by James Wan, so he did Aquaman and Fast and Fear, uh, Fast Seven, right? Script by a guy I'd never heard of, Greg Russo. Mm-hmm. No idea who he is. Um, I looked him up on IMDb, and he's doing this and like the Resident Evil reboot and something else, but nothing of note that I'd heard of. And then the director Simon McCoy has mm-hmm. done like commercials. 
And so <laughs> right. this will be his <laughs> his debut as a director. So, Ed, can you enlighten me on what a producer does that knows what's going on behind what the director does that's sitting behind the camera, I guess? And, yeah, that's kind of the thing where the, 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 the director is there on the set and you see the director and you see what he's doing. And the producer just kind of like really runs the show from behind the curtain. You know, he ma- you yeah, know he, he overlooks everything. He helps uh, get funding. He uh, helps make sure that, you know, he'll step in and, and, and consult on stories sometimes. Sometimes he'll help hire writers. Um, mm. Just kind of almost. An, the producer will hire the director yeah, a lot of times. Yeah, just yeah. kind of an all-around overseer, kind of a, the guy that really gets things done, you know, and, and signs the director's check. Goodness and he'll gracious. be there for editing as well too. Like he'll want to, he'll want to oversee some, how the editing goes. And yeah, it's, it's kind of a, I, I would not want to be a producer. Like there all. are definitely times where, you know, Warner brothers, it says, Oh, we want to make this movie. We have this script that we bought from somebody and we are getting this director. Mm-hmm. So the producer like, is like, all right, I'm, I'm securing that director. But I mean, the producer basically covers and, and, and controls pulls the strings, if you will, for every single thing. Like yeah. the director makes all of the decisions behind the camera in terms of like what the actors are going to do, their direction, where they're going, their emotion, all that kind of stuff. The cinematographer or the director of photography handles everything that's in front of the camera. And then the producer basically handles everything else or has like, he's the one His that or she and, is the one who yeah. puts all the pieces in place to handle everything. Right. Else. Right. And manages the budget and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And not saying, obviously we got, We've gotten some amazing directors out of not doing anything before. We mm-hmm, got the Wachowski mm-hmm. brothers back yeah. when they were the brothers. They had never done a movie before. They had done. They mm-hmm. had brought the Matrix to the table. Um, you know, JJ had at least done TV. Had done Alias, but you know, he had not done mm-hmm. a movie before. He did what was it? Mission Impossible Three. And so, um, it's just crazy for me to think like directorial debut and maybe it's a good one that you know nobody's going to be expecting anything like you're yeah, expecting mm-hmm. it to be a c minus movie yeah mm-hmm. but they said that uh it's going to be the biggest the largest film production in south australia's history so yeah. that'll be nice i still Kinda don't like think when we lord need of the rings it. went to to new zealand new i think zealand. at the time yeah. that's like the yeah. biggest thing that had ever happened to them mm-hmm. <laughs> that's right yeah. that's right so the question always lies Yes. Do we need it? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> Do, don't you don't you agree? Absolutely not. We've had a Mortal Kombat movie. Mortal Kombat 11 is out right now. Everybody's playing that. And then, you know, by the time this movie comes out, eh, the, well, uh, give me a good story and uh, and let me make me eat my words, but I can't see that happening. Yeah, give me a good story. Make me play the game, though. I'll, right. The the movie. Which I don't anyway. I'm not a fighting <laughs> I'm, game I'm guy. Gonna, I'm going to flip the script a little bit. Yeah. Nice. Nice. To it. me, m- more so than almost, you can make the argument that more so than any other franchise in gaming, Mortal Kombat is a guilty pleasure. It's yeah. just a uh, give me the gory, the goofy, mm-hmm. the funny, the silly. Just entertain me with the slapstick yep. and just put it You're in front right. of me. To and me, the more over the top, the, the better. The movies yeah. are the exact, and, and, and the, the short films that they've done and the stuff that you can see on YouTube, it's the same thing. They're not going to win you any awards for acting or directing or story. They're not, not going to win for. you any of that stuff. Yeah, but right. you know what? You, you slap Scorpion on there and some dude that can shoot ice from his hands. I'm, I'm in for that. Mm. Yeah. I'm willing to give it a go. Yeah, in I will the theater? totally give it a go. No, I'm not saying all that. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that's yeah, where they need your money. It, but, but, that's where they need your money. The need I, I understand that, but that's not completely fair when it comes from me because I see almost nothing in the theater. <laughs> yeah. So that's, But yes, I will see it because it's just, it's you throw Scorpion out there and I'm interested. Let it's me ask just, you though. just the way that it is. Is there probably, I don't want to say too big a number, is there probably four other video games you'd rather see get made into a movie than Mortal Kombat? If you thought about it. Yes. Yeah, probably. I can probably, probably think of other ones, especially because Mortal Kombat has been done. So that by al- that alone makes it to where it's like, okay, but you've gotten one. Right. So right. let's give some love these other directions. That's kind of how will say, I feel. I will say, if it came out like, kind of like a horror movie, really gritty, gross at times, I kind of would go see it. 
Am I desensitized by all of this violence and everything that I, I want to <laughs> no, see some guys head get popped that's off or it, something? That's what it's for, like, but like, it's what it's for. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Like, what Mortal Kombat I've already for. watched some of the, I've already watched some of the, uh, the finishes for 11 and I'm just sitting back laughing. I think it's great. It's so great. It's over the top. It's crazy mm-hmm. to try and like, if there's a movie that's kind of like that, that's got that kind of gross gore to it. Yeah. And it's gritty. Yeah. Okay. I might go and see it for that that'd be kind of cool yeah i just wish they would do like and i know they talked about it but like i just wish they would do like a gears movie or a halo movie oh, or gears just, would be they're great they're gonna do a gears movie though i, I mean i know so. that, that's what they great. say Are you, uh, and yet we're getting sonic before that yeah <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Sonic's already been crucified yeah, at so- this point. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Sonic oh. was announced, started working on, and is coming out all in the time that we've talked about getting a Gears movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Or for exactly. that matter, I mean, we <laughs> with the Xbox's launch, we were supposed to get a Halo series directed by <laughs> Steven Spielberg oh, or right. his production company Ooh, or something. Yeah, how did that work out? Uh, I mean, I think it's still somewhere simmering in some area. Yeah. And you can't do a Days Gone because that's you know world that's uh, world, world War, War Z. Z or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like you, that's been done. Like that, that doesn't make sense to do that again. I don't know, man. I, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> I know. Good for South Australia, though. You know what? If that's bringing money yeah, down know, there, right? There awesome. You go. Yeah, good for them. They're the new Georgia. That's right. <laughs> oh, everybody else South the Australia, Georgia. the new Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if so i was funny. south australia australia i'd just be like hey wait what what i do to you <laughs> exactly <laughs> <laughs> what else you got chris okay so um dreams is out on early access right now on playstation 4 yeah um very similar to like when you do early access like on steam and everything like you pay a, a smaller price and you get access to it so that people can go in there and create stuff right now and kind of get their hands on it um and there's been two something a- for launch Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. And there's been a lot of like, you could see all kinds, just go on YouTube and, and search mm-hmm. and you can find all kinds of crazy stuff. Some things obviously and very are terrible. like small increments and like things are just getting figured out. But there's been some really cool stuff being made on there. Can you re-explain Dreams? I, the game? Not, n- no, I, I can't. I you can't go- either. You need is to go just, look at the videos and watch. Cr- is it a creator? That's what dreams is. Dreams is a thing where you it's make your be. dreams come true. Like the thing that we saw at E3 or whatever it was yeah. seemed mm-hmm. like, you know, somebody painting something in it, yes. a weird looking guy coming to life. And mm-hmm. dreams That's is right, all yeah. about building and creating and enjoying things that other people created. Is that right? Like there's no story to it on its own or is it? There is going to be some type of campaign slash story mode in it, and yeah. I'm assuming it's going to be relatively short, but there is supposed to be something. I don't know what that something's going to be. Okay. The, the bulk of Dreams is going to be gener- people getting in there, users getting in there, and creating things, Yep. little games or game levels or full-on whatever. I mean, it, it's Music. basically giving you access to a game engine, and you can make everything i had no you know, idea from that extent. e3 trailer you know that that's what yeah, it was well, yeah i mean I didn't if either. nothing else you have to be able to look at that and be like look even they're having a hard time explaining what it is you really it's definitely one of the things you have to see to believe yeah you have to see what can happen and then be amazed by the stuff that's coming out of it now that's not my wheelhouse no sir no, i don't have the patience either, for that no. i don't have the skill for that but the more that got I time see to be this creative. cool stuff being coming out of coming out of dreams, the more it it makes me think. Shoot, do I need to end up getting dreams just to play all this cool stuff other people are making? That's the thing. Because yeah. one of the things that, yeah. that's going on right mm-hmm. now is there's a dude remaking Metal Gear Solid inside of dreams. That's the first one. I believe you, so crazy. Yes. And he's I believe just you're got in, the, Chris. He's just got the first little level where, you know, you, at the very beginning of the uh, original Metal Gear, Metal Gear Solid, you're underneath this base and then you kind of get to get around these guys and then you go up an elevator and that starts the main game. Mm-hmm. He's only built the level. There's no enemies in it right now, but he's got 
the the character model there it, it doesn't look like a snake it or it's a really low version of it yeah he's still working on that but it's got all the crates the, the level looks beautiful he can go around the corner and lean up against the wall he can aim down sights he can he, ha- he can't yet crawl underneath the crates that's something he's adding in and he hasn't been able to make the the elevator go up yet but all this stuff that he's just figuring out and it's a guy who works he's he's um works for tt games which is the developers behind Lego Star Wars yep. and the and the Avengers game? Which is crazy. He has a job. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And he's just a community manager. He's he's not a developer. He's just the global community manager for that developer. And wow. he, but he's getting in there and doing this stuff. And he's definitely like he has a YouTube video out where you, you can see the first little bits that he's done. Yep. He talks about some of the growing pains and, and the things that he's like had these issues. And then he through community help and everything, he's able to learn how to things. So originally, when he first made all of the different uh, container crates that were in there, he was using up like 60 percent of the available memory. He was able to change all that down and make it look the way it looks now, which I encourage you. His name is Bear Parker. Go look at his video of what he's been able to make for Metal Gear Solid inside of Dreams. And then just explore the rest of it because he's doing amazing things. And just with these few tweaks from the from the community that he's been able to talk mm-hmm. to and get help from them, he's been able to cut that was he was using sixty percent of the memory down to like twenty or thirty percent. And that and, he, and that too like rocked me. I was like, sixty uh-huh. percent of what memory? Like it, yeah. like it, dreams is so much an engine within itself that even mm-hmm. in itself it has a a limit to what you can put. You know, so much mm-hmm. stuff on a screen, and he figured out how to get it to where it looked the same but was created differently like yeah. i'm so blown away by what dreams even like how it even how you even make yes. something yeah. that makes something it's crazy because when when i saw the e3 trailer i saw the the cool sparkly painting on the wall and i was like oh wow mm-hmm. i like spraying spray painting on the wall in second sun this looks kind <laughs> yeah. of fun yep and then yeah, i watched exactly so do i i watched this different. video and i'm like wait this Metal Gear oh, thing phone? was made in that? I don't understand what's going on in that thing. <laughs> I know. What is happening down the street? <laughs> I know. Exactly. exactly. Abner. Abner, come look at what the neighbors are doing. <laughs> it's it's insane. And it's like this makes me believe that Dreams has got to be one of the number one first right off the bat games that's also being ported to PS5 because oh yeah this is you're just barely you're just mm-hmm. opening the door to the crazy stuff that could be made with Dreams right at the end of PlayStation 4's generation it's so like no nah, man this game's got to move over cuz yeah. how there's no way you're going to gimp everybody being stuck on PlayStation 4 yeah. with all this I'm I mean, so excited to see do. What comes out of this game? Because like even seeing people make like little cardboard rooms and mm-hmm. running around shooting a gun, like I'm like, ha- okay, so wait, what now? Like mm-hmm. it's like it's so beyond me to understand any of it. And he's got mm-hmm. Metal Gear looking good, and and <laughs> yeah. it never got it never got ported, right? Like it never. There's not an HD yeah. version, right? No, it never did. No, that's what this I is. Mean, it, it, there was one. There was a version on the GameCube that looked a little bit better than the PlayStation version, but not. It still was not the same as what you're looking at. Yeah, and that's what I'm. I'm not understanding. Is like how I just don't know how any of it works. I really don't. Like I'm so ignorant. Is it feels like one yeah. of the things I'm the most ignorant about. Like I feel I know more about politics and I hate politics than I understand about how Dreams works. Yeah, on a console yeah. I love. I, 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 I it makes I, me I, wish I really it wasn't am- just on PS4. Like, I wish it was on yeah. Xbox. I wish it was on PC. You can imagine if this thing was on PC. Yeah. Dude. I, I mean, just don't, how do you... It could, I, be, isn't that it what make, it, it is could anyway? become start part of PlayStation Now, next generation. Because that's on PC. Maybe that would work. I, I don't know. It's just, it, it blows my mind. Like, I want, I think that I want to get Dreams. I don't ever want to build a single thing. No, just, I just to enjoy want everybody to play else's stuff. And look at and see all this other cool stuff that other people are going to be doing. Yep. So here's my question. Mm-hmm. Yes. How do you think, because they did a similar thing. Remember, uh, what is it, with Sackboy? Uh, Big Planet. Little Big Planet. Little Big Planet. So when that came out, that was its big thing. It's like, you can make almost anything like and make this happen. And I remember mm-hmm. one of the stories that we talked about on this show was that somebody recreated the first level of Final Fantasy VII in Little Big Planet. Mm-hmm. I don't remember which one it was, one or two or three. Mm-hmm. However, it's it's just like sack boy with the cloud hair walking around to other sack boys and them like saying the lines and you kind of are walking through the thing. Like, yes, it would have taken hours and hours, but it's not Final Fantasy VII. 
Right. What we're seeing yeah. out of this Metal Gear Solid thing is yes. Metal Gear Solid. It's and crazy. And him walking around and the sound effects and the music and all this stuff. So here's my question. Mm-hmm. Where do you think, or do you think they brush it aside where like copyright infringement may come into that, play when oh. people so recreate So when you things? first boot up the game and, and you're logging in again, right now it's only in early access. There's like this huge stuff you got to scroll through and you got to agree to. And part of nope, that is, is obviously no, like you can't be stealing other people's stuff. There's copyright stuff that basically cuts out the liability for Media Molecule and Sony. Yeah. But they will have teams going in and curing things and pulling things down. So that I, my, my head went to that first. It's like, okay, because people made PT. They made a completely full, fully playable PT inside of Dreams. It looks almost it exactly looks almost like the, the original exact PT. exact same. How mm-hmm. is that? So, so <laughs> how, because I mean, they're using... And I don't know where they're getting it or if they're literally just recreating. Like they're using voice assets. They're using music assets. They're using all these things. They must just be or, sampling or matching it. them exactly. Yeah. And it's like, I I don't. So it makes me think like there's no way that when this releases that That's this Metal okay. Gear Solid remake, let's say he only has the first 10 minutes yeah. playable. There's no way it can be on there, right? Or, or can I don't know. I mean, I mean right? it, it depends on like if Konami or whoever owns it is – fine yes. with it and they just let it fly because it's not yeah. like they're doing something that they're gonna you know it's not taking money out of their pocket because it's not like you can go buy metal gear solid from them mm-hmm. right now right it becomes um, one of those situations where when it fully launches if it's been able people have been able to get in there and make a bunch of really cool stuff it almost makes me wonder if it would be one of the things where Man, for all these copyright holders, you should look at it kind of like YouTube because technically speaking, you shouldn't be putting Let's Plays on YouTube because you're putting the whole game on there. Right. But right. the companies True. kind of look at it and be like, ah, well, but this drives interest. And so they kind of just let it happen anyways. And a lot of them have come out and said, hey, we're giving you the a bit the right to use our stuff. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. But yeah. But man. Well, I, don't know, I know in the new Trials game, you can buy like helmets and shirts and what have you. And I went to find a shirt and I was like, oh my gosh, they have a Batman shirt. I'm going to get this. And I'm scrolling and I'm like, oh my gosh, they have a Nintendo shirt. That's crazy that they have a Nintendo shirt you can buy on a PlayStation game. And then I realized they were all player created things you can upload and buy with your coins or mm-hmm. whatever. And I went. Yeah, because that's the other thing is you can create an asset and you can just share it with other people making things. Right. And then if a person takes an asset you built and then they make a game or something when the credits roll or whatever at the end, you get credited for that. Like it's right. It just gets put in there because you created these assets that that person used. So it's a huge, could be a huge collaborative thing too. Right. Yeah. It's so insane to try to wrap your head around. When I went back to that trial store, like a week later, none of that stuff was there anymore. Oh, oh really? Wow. Even the, even the really? Batman shirt that I bought, I didn't have it anymore. Interesting. Yeah. So that's nuts. Yeah. Pixar it didn't happen. Um, so my other my other question was uh I wonder if say you create something and it pops off kind of like um Counter-Strike did. You know, Counter-Strike mm-hmm. was a mod for Half-Life. You know, it wasn't its own game at first. It was just a mod that somebody created. Oh, really? Um yeah. And that's the same thing with for Dota, I right? Know that. I don't know. Wasn't, wasn't Dota a mod? I didn't like I didn't a... never play Dota. Hmm. Okay. Sorry, um, sorry. But you know, go. somebody had to move the thing forward and make money off of counter-strike which became popular from a Mm -hmm. you know from a fan's perspective Mm -hmm. so does media molecule own everything created within dreams Mm. yeah that also will be an interesting uh thing to tackle because here you've made this mm -hmm. thing say it becomes extremely popular your specific game say they make the Fortnite Mm -hmm. of dreams does yep. Media Molecule get to then take that and make that game? Mm. You know, if they if if I'm, if they want to, I'm sure it's all broken down in there. And if it hasn't already been written when the official release comes out, I'm sure there's going to be all kinds or not all a bunch of them. There'll be an article or two that'll really break down and put in layman's terms, like okay, yeah. when you make stuff in Greens, this is what happens, yeah. or not in I would layman's think terms, not even. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It, it, even beyond that, like it's gonna or is it basically is it now owned by Sony? That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, I just I don't know how that breaks down, but I've got to think that there's going to be some you know, like handoff. I mean, of that, ownership that terms or, of service know, is going to be 
I mean, you're just going to scroll down and down. It. Like, they should make it to where yep. you can't go past it until you scroll all the way down and hit X to accept because that thing's going to have to be super long to cover all these bases yeah. of saying, hey, mm-hmm. here's a creator, create. You're like, okay, 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 but wait. Do I get to make DLC? Like, mm-hmm. like how does that work? Because they said DLC will be handled in, uh, let's see, I was reading on Reddit. And this is like a general thing that was put under the PlayStation mm-hmm. thing. And it was saying all these things you can do in dreams. It said DLC DLC for dreams will be a thing, but it will depend on how people use the game. And so, and that links back to something from uh, Twitter. And But will their- you, like if you create the Fortnite uh, inside of dreams, one, yes. everything has to funnel through dreams. That's as right. far as I understand it anyways. Right. Yep. So it's all going to live there. It's not like it's going to be ported out to a different, like the steam store or something. But right. what I'm saying then- is, Counter Strike was it was ported out into its own thing, but wasn't it, and wasn't CS:GO it done was created by, in all these other things. But wasn't it done by? Doesn't uh, Valve own that? Like, didn't aren't they the ones who did that? I just don't know who did it originally. Okay. Maybe they did do it originally. I have no idea. I just what I'm it. saying though is with Dreams, like I don't, th- I would assume it's written in there, but th- you wouldn't be able to get whatever's made out of Dreams. And I don't know. It, granted, it's still just the early access. Like I don't know. Like if I make, if I were to remake Metal Gear Solid, and let's say that there was, they let it happen, and there was no like, hey, don't you can't make this. I don't know right. if within Dreams you can then sell those things that you make. I think they're just there for you people who have access to Dreams to utilize i don't think right that's just of it. and that's that's the bulk of my question is like wh- what if they want to port it out what if they want to bring it out to where mm-hmm. it's something everybody can get and it makes it you know i guess they just talk to you about it hey you created this we'd love to throw you five dollars for every time we sell this twenty dollar thing you know what i mean mm-hmm. it's just gonna be very and i'm with you chris i'm like i guess i just buy it to have it just in case something pops off that's amazing yeah um, and then my other side thing is, Chris, I think you need to contact that guy and make sure you can voice one of the characters in there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's doing a call out like whoever can help. You just be like, hey, man, I got a little situation. I can I'd love to be a part of this. I love this thing. I think I could be this character. If you don't have anybody voicing them, I'd love to do it. There you go, Chris. Uh, I love that. Uh, well, love that. I don't have the voiceover chops that you guys do. I bet you figure it out. Come on, Bob. man. Come on. <laughs> That's what we and Ed did. We figured it out. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I give it. A, I'll give it a thought. Yeah. Okay. Um, the last thing I had, uh, just real quick, I just thought this was interesting, but because the Japanese, um, market is just so different than America. Hmm. The, oh really? This yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, you hardly noticed, right? The Switch mm-hmm. has now outsold the PS4 in Japan. Wow! Wow! And really? I thought that was crazy. So, and the Switch came out three years after the PS4 came out in Japan, and so mm-hmm. the PS4 huh. is at eight million seventy-seven thousand seven hundred fifty-six units at the time of writing. This is on uh, PushSquare.com. And the Switch sits at 8,125,637. So, like, the gap is continuing to grow, obviously, because the PS4 is slowing, where the Switch is still selling like bananas in, in Japan. And I just think that is nuts. You know what's nuts is I saw an article this week that Days Gone has sold more already in Japan than God of War. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Really? You think it's because yeah. of multi platform? I don't know. Wait, Days, maybe, wait, Days be, Gone isn't multi-platform, wait, is it? Sony no, it's 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 Sony. Sony. Oh yeah. my gosh, that's crazy. Isn't that crazy? Oops. What's yeah. going on over there? Oops. What's going on down the street? <laughs> <Yeah>. Abner! <laughs> Look what the neighbors are playing! <laughs> They're getting so, caught up in all this Days Gone haven't played God of War yet. <laughs> oh my gosh. Chris, did you have anything else? No. Edward Placencia. Yes, sir. Lay it on us. Well, over on the Married to the Games YouTube channel, we've got more parts of Days Gone Up. Parts five through nine are up there. As I mentioned earlier, there's a total of about a little over 38 hours you can check out. And uh, yeah, enjoy that. Uh, It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. It's not the game you think it's going to be. I thought it was going to be nonstop horde modes. 
it's a lot more sneaking around. It's a lot more stealth. It's so much fun. And you've run into some hordes, but have you run into like the E3 hordes where it's like the whole screen is just zombies or whatever they call it? Nothing like that. And I'm wondering if that's going to happen or if that was just for that E3 announcement. Just to be like, look at this tech demo we have. (laughs) Exactly. Because even when I went to that abandoned mill that looked like I was at the E3 location, there weren't nearly that many there. Oh, it's like Not seven of close. them. Yeah, yeah. With, and they were all holding up like cardboard zombies to make it look like there was more of them. <laughs> they had, they had, the plants versus they zombies, stand, zombies. They had yes. stand-in zombies. Yeah. Yes. Uh, as far as free games goes, uh, once again, just a reminder that starting... Uh, May 16th on the Xbox Golf Club 2019 featuring mm. PGA Tour is now available as his comic jumper. And if you've got Game Pass, The Surge and Lego Batman 3 are also now available. And speaking of free games, it's been really cool to hear people, especially in the Discord, talking about what remains of Edith Finch and mm-hmm. discovering yeah, that game for the first time. Our friend Frankie, who Gabe, you mentioned earlier, our mm-hmm. new listener, I watched his stream of it and I I loved the game so much and it's just so cool hearing other people experience it for the first time and 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 having that same reaction that I did. So that's been really cool. So that's free on PS Plus this month. Yep. You've got a chance to at least add it to your library if you don't download it right now. Yes. Uh, but as far as free games go and YouTube videos go, that's what we're looking at this week. I like it. Well, every week we ask you guys a question. Last week was no different. We asked you guys, what is your favorite video game event during the year? Starting over on Twitter, we have Mark 2. Games done quick is my jam. I just love seeing Mm. people break games in ways the developers never intended. While I'm on the subject, one day I will get Gabe to attempt a speed run of a Mario game. Yes, I'm serious. We'll do it for charity and it will be awesome. Ooh. Nice. I could maybe try that. I mean, uh, speed run, <laughs> speed run. It's tough, man. Shoot, yeah. Can't imagine it. Uh, Matt Galeza at CCMG twelve. The Game Awards. It's put on by oh. a guy who truly loves gaming. It's a celebration of games. He listens to fans and tries to make it better every year instead of whatever he wants to do. It feels yeah. personal. It's hype. I usually cry at least once at something. <laughs> Easily my favorite. Man, I tell you what, uh, we gotta get answer. Jeff Keeley on the show, man. Yeah, Jeff, I, I just oh. think I just think he's. Can we make that happen. I just think he's incredible. Make mm. that happen, Gabe. Yeah. You're our interview guy. Make it happen. Uh, listen. And then we introduce Ed, him to happen. Kojima. <laughs> All right, cool. Thanks, Jeff. You better, you better learn Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> he uh, knows more English than he lets on. <laughs> does he really? Yeah, I think he does. I think you he understands. It, I don't or know that he speaks it very well, but yeah, yeah. yeah. You saw him at McDonald's like, uh, the number two. Um, <laughs> at Fed Gamer, staying up late to live stream E3 press conferences here in London usually lands around 2 a.m. Ooh. The buzz Ooh. on Twitter is electric. Good times, man. I know that. That's cool. Great. Over on Facebook, we've got the Facebook page and the Facebook group representing today. Dak Huntley, can I count the fall? <laughs> The season (laughs) as an event. As a gamer, I feel like the whole year with video games, news, and rumors totally builds up to the week after week fall release. Normally starts with the release of Madden in August, then ends with some surprise last minute edition release in the beginning of December. All of the events of the year normally lead up to this time of year. That's a Mm. great answer. The fall. That's funny. Yeah. that's That's a great answer. Lane White. Lately, it has been Nintendo's directs, but until recent E3 has always been what got me hyped up. There you go. Travis Pospisil over on the MTTG community. Fridays when the MTTG podcast drops. Oh, no! come on, man. Yeah, Travis. Uh, Curtis Blissard. I have to say... Uh, I have to say event has to be extra life. Gamers have Ah. almost always had a negative view in most people's eyes. And to see everyone who has a love for gaming come together for a good cause warms my heart. 
The bonus of having the Married to the Games friends, family, and community rallying around this cause is just icing on the cake for me, and I hope it continues for many more years. There you Love go. that, Aww. Curtis. Yes. Very nice. Extra life is an amazing thing. Mm -hmm. It really is. Skinny Matt over on Discord says, I'd have to say the Rock Game Fest. As cool as E3 is, it's nice to see what's being done locally. And I was like, what's the Rock Game Fest? Well, it's the Rochester Game Festival happening. It just happened on May 18th or about to happen on May 18th, which, you know, we're recording this on the 16th. Um, mm. So that's kind of cool for Rochester. Rochester's yeah. kind of representing. Matt took me around all kind of places while I was in Rochester. So I was glad. I'm glad to see uh, Rochester represent. Nice, Matt. Bad Gamer Elite said, my favorite is now the MTTG Centennials. Mm, it, it was E3 because that's all I knew. But since getting involved with Married to the Games crew and my one experience with all of you that clinched it, if I had to say outside of that extra life with the gametography community, we had a blast supporting each other while doing it. Hashtag for the kids plush punch drunk. Plus, Punch Drunk Sea of Thieves is amazing. Nice. <laughs> That's awesome. That's funny. That's and, awesome. And the gametography community, we have to give a big shout out. They joined the Married to the Games community yeah. and supported uh, that way. So thank you guys again so much. Nice. Um, Let's see. Who else we got? Uh, Beef Master Serta. All you so-called Overwatch fans and nobody says BlizzCon? Yeah, last year Ooh, was rough, uh, but it's still the best. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to go to a BlizzCon. Yeah. I said Overwatch League. Yeah. Sir. That, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I love Overwatch so much. I said the one that's only Overwatch. <laughs> there you go. Damn. There you go. Uh, Mozambique 829, Mark Boucher says, besides E3, of course, it's a toss up between games done quick and the Zelda-thon charity events. Love seeing hmm. the speed runs and my favorite Zelda games being played through while raising money for charity. Nice. Hey, man, we got some giving I just love hearing here. all the different charities. Mm -hmm. awesome. I know. I, Ed, when's yours coming up? Uh, I'm doing my uh, Veterans Day weekend. Veterans Day weekend. Yeah, it'll be in That's uh, awesome. November 11th around that time. Oh, okay. Mark your calendars. Yes. Yeah, yes. <laughs> yes. For a stack up. That's right. Um, thank you guys so much. You guys know where to find us. Facebook.com slash marriage to the games, twitter.com slash MTTG cast. Of course, married to the games.com where we have all, and I mean all the podcasts up there. Like mm -hmm. Ed said, youtube.com slash married to the games. Now on Patreon, patreon.com slash MTTG, if you'd like to support the show, throw a dollar in the tip jar. We sure would appreciate it. Just mm -hmm. like your local barista appreciates it. Yeah, that's right. Woo. And like has been mentioned, Extra Life, you can go to extra-life, extra-life.org slash team slash MTTG. Come join the team. You hear that our family's all about charity and we're raising this money for the kids, baby, for the kids. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Woo! And uh, Eduardo. Uh, rate us on iTunes, and perhaps in a future episode, when one of us talks, a little baseball card will pop up and tell you more information about us. <laughs> <laughs> well done. The more you know. <laughs> <laughs> what do you know? Ed likes coffee. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> See, it didn't even clutter the screen. See? <laughs> well, let's get into some questions. All right, we're going to start with Discord. We're going to start with Hollywood Bowl. Oh, Hollywood Bowl. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> is there a franchise slash game where you would like to see the protagonist be of the opposite gender 
For example, would you like to see a female God of War, Goddess of War, perhaps? Ooh. Or maybe a female uh, Metal Gear Solid game, or maybe even a Princess of Persia? This Ooh. question was sparked from the new Snapchat filter that changes your gender on your phone. See, the gender swap swaps for Nathan Drake and Snake Below. Oh, okay. Well, there. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for throwing that See in. See picture or go to Discord. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. Ooh, that's a good question. Uh great question. Gender swap on the main character. Shoot, the first thing that came to mind was Mass Effect, and you can do that on there. So that mm -hmm. can't be so be, and so next. that's not that. You um, know, Ellie and Joel flip would be pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Ellie and Joel flip would like, be cool. Just complete reversal, like Young yeah. boy, yep. and mm -hmm. getting taken care of by veteran woman. That's That'd right. That'd be amazing. That'd be cool. Ooh, what else? That's a good Pac -Man? one. Pac-Man? Oh, wait, no. Yeah. <laughs> they did that one. Yep. That's yeah. been done. <laughs> you know, I'm going to say a way out. I just think it would be cool to see how oh, uh, Edward, like a Thelma what a good and Louise answer. duo type would, would handle that situation. Why are you Dog so smart, man? Got it, Edward. Yeah, right? <laughs> Shoot, that's bad. a good one. Doggone it. What about you there, Chris McCracken? Shoot, I don't know. I, honestly, like most games, I'd be totally fine being, you know, whatever gender it's going to be. I, I yeah. was thinking of the same. I was thinking that I was trying to think about it. I was like, okay, well, actually, you know, there's a female version of Sonic. And I, everything that I was thinking was like, well, and then I thought about Pac Man. I was like, well, there's Mrs. Pac Man. Everyone, I was trying to think, hang on. There actually is a, for a lot of these. And then they didn't, they don't have like a female Nathan Drake. But then they made uh, Lara Croft the one. Well, I guess yeah, you could say that. I, mean, I guess they do. Yeah. I was gonna, I was gonna bring up the one that had um, Chloe yeah, the two in girls. there. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, I was yeah say that's yeah. basically was that version of that. But yep. doggone it, if not Lara Croft. You know what? I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna go with. Uh, and I don't know if it's in these games. I don't think it is from what I've seen. But I think it'd be a cool twist. Why, why don't we switch up uh, Grand Theft Auto? For one, and oh, let the, yeah. the, yeah. the main that. protagonist be a, a that would be fun, a lady. You that know, it's not great. the exact same thing, and it is Hollywood Bones did touch on it, and I knew that Kojima was not just because he takes so long making his games. He's going to have like spinoffs in the Metal Girl Metal Gear universe back when he was making them, but one of the best characters in the series is the boss, which was um, Snake's boss, and she was a female. Mm -hmm. And I always thought it would be cool if she had her own like little spinoff game where oh, she was cool. going off and doing things. I always oh, thought that'd nice. be really cool, which yeah. I'm assuming would be like kind of the same formula uh, in, in, in everything. But that would be mm -hmm. really awesome. There you go. Love it. Like Good that. question. Yeah, that's a fun question. Beefmaster, yeah. in the vein of acquiring the soul, st soul stone, you must sacrifice what you love most. So what video game disc is getting thrown off the cliff? Ooh. The thing Shoot. Chris is digital. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, has yeah. Throw, yeah. he has to throw his whole PlayStation. <laughs> throw the whole PlayStation no. over. Man. Yeah. I'm going to say, uh, shoot. I mean, we all know Final Fantasy VII is my favorite game, but like, I think toss that. It. I know. I mean, and I you could. You got to toss it. Mm, I mean, the remake's coming. <laughs> um, <laughs> Toss it in the hopes I'm gonna that the remake th I'm is gonna good. Throw, I'm going to throw... Um, <laughs> Ed's going to hate this answer. Oh. I'm going to throw, throw Dragon's Lair 2 hey. over the edge, only because I am like the only one who defends yeah. that game. <laughs> that should have been at the bottom of the cliff anyway, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I, I threw it over for the exact opposite reason. Yeah, but I've got to get the Soul Stone, baby. <laughs> I loved that game as a child. Love, love, yeah, love. Did. Crazy. I put so many so quarters crazy. in that thing. So many tokens. Uh, Chris, oh, boy. Uh, Let's not say Metal Gear Solid. Okay, then I'm gonna say. I know it's gonna sound as though it's the the one you've been with recently, kind of thing, but it's not. It's just I really like this game moved up to my number two, so I would throw off God of War. Ooh, because I mean, it has to be you know something you truly love. Yeah, that's if you're right. Acquiring the soul yeah, stone, yeah, that hurts. You can't yeah. fake it. No, you can't. Old old Red Skull knows. Don't yeah, you can't be it. like I love this game. Bye, Night Trap. Oh. <laughs> 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 the witness you were so 
<laughs> meaningful to me. No. <laughs> Everybody's gone to the rapture. Bring me the soul stone. <laughs> <laughs> I did like that game. I just did love that it. That was a really good game. I liked yeah. it. Yeah. Tim, what say you? Uh, I'm going Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Ooh. Ooh. Not Ooh. Uncharted 2? No, I'd hate to. No, because I'd, I'd hate to throw Odyssey over. It was either there that or go. Witcher 3. Yeah. Either one. Good ones. I love them. I love them. I love them. There you go. What what say you, Edward? I mean, if if it's got to be the one that you love, it's got to. I guess I'm saying goodbye to Overwatch. Oh yeah. man, that hurt. That hurts. Wow. You that better hurts. get the stone for that one. That hurts. Yeah, I think <laughs> things you're... better work out in the end. <laughs> <laughs> I do so much snapping. Yeah, I <laughs> dare you to not work out. I don't even know what you Dr. Could do. Doctor Strange said it had to be this way, and so yeah. here we are. Yeah, this is our right. one, you know, the one outcome. <laughs> right. What? I don't even know. Do you guys know? And hopefully, this uh, let's stay spoiler free. Do we know what the Soul Stone does on its own? Like we knew what the Time Stone did and the Power Stone, but do we know what the Soul Stone did once you got it, just by itself? I don't even know how it gets back to where you found it. <laughs> yeah, as. how do you how do you <laughs> restore the soul stone? <laughs> no, but I'm just saying, like, how do you like what what power did it give you? Soul, baby. <laughs> oh, <laughs> one, two, three, four. <laughs> bip, 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 bip. Get up! Get on up! Get up! Get on up! I just want to. I just want to know who James Brown threw over that cliff. <laughs> <laughs> I got so and I'm super bad. Yeah. <laughs> All right, James Brown that killed his mama. Oh man. Oh. So to answer your question about the Soul Stone, um, I don't think they ever really explain it in the movies. In the comic wo- world, though, everybody when you die, they would go into the Soul Stone. So you're essentially like the prison See, master of everybody, and you can control. Can you revive how- them? I, I believe when you had the Infinity Stone, at least in the comics, I think that you could. You mm. had control over anything that was in the Soul Stone. Oh, uh, okay. Like mm. everybody that what died does that mean, at control? any point in time. So it's huh? like you're, it's the portal for lost souls. Or, yeah, so or, like, what does rather that mean? than the person going you know, to an afterlife somewhere, they would get, when they would die, they would get sucked into the Soul Stone. Yeah, but then what? Well, then if you had the Infinity you'd Stone, be, I guess you can bring stay it back, there right? until the wielder of the Soul Stone wanted to do something or change that, yeah. or he just leaves you trapped there forever. I know, but what yeah. I'm I saying is... There, the... was, there wasn't like a specific, like, you know, like the, the time zone or whatever, the Tesseract could, it has portals and things. It didn't do any fancy thing like that. It just gave you power over anybody mm-hmm. that was trapped inside of it. Yeah, man. You just take that stone and... You put it on the end of a staff like John Hammond in Jurassic Park with that mosquito <laughs> stuck in amber. Yeah, man. <laughs> Spare no <Yeah>. expense. <laughs> that makes zero sense to me. That's funny. Mommy, I can see the fleas. Mommy, I can see the fleas. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Anyway, calm fury. Here we go. My daughter is starting to watch Dora the Explorer. Yay. It's the first, it's the first time I realized that the show's premise is that Dora is a video game character. Really? What video game character would you like to see host a children's educational show? Kratos comes to mind. Boy, <laughs> yeah, because that color is blue. Don't be sorry. Be better. <laughs> She's a point and click <laughs> adventure girl. Right. Really? Dora is. Yeah. I did not know oh, that. No. She's like supposed to be either. like a computer program. So it's like, where do we huh. go next? And then you see like a mouse or a finger go over and right. click it. You oh, the it. river. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. it is right. Huh. And I want Kratos everybody to know I was awesome. calling Amara Boots before I saw that show. The sidekick okay. in that show's name is Boots. I had no idea. What is mm. the sidekick? A monkey. Monkey. Ah, uh, okay. Mm-hmm. And he wears boots. All right. So what video game character would you like to see host a children's educational show? Oh. Wow. I would say Yin Sid from... <laughs> The Disney <laughs> games, because <laughs> I think he's crotchety. <laughs> he just hides it really well, so I can see him getting frustrated with the kids. <laughs> You're supposed to dot the eyes and cross the T's, not cross the eyes and dot the T's. <laughs> and just for oh, uh, and just for a little trivia, Yin Sid is Disney spelled backwards. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey, there you go. What say you, uh, Eduardo? Man. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's a tough one. Mm. To teach children. I'm going to say, uh, since, he, since he's like still Thank thinking you. and I got one, Thank I'm going to go, 
I'm going to do uh, Reaper. <laughs> from oh, oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> you grow that's old nice. and then you die, die, <laughs> die, die. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. What, what are you I'm looking best. at? <laughs> uh, my, my pick is in. I'm going Claptrap. Oh, oh, he would oh, be that's good. A good one. That would is be him. awesome. Yeah. Wow, yeah, that's a he, good answer. Because he can go both ways. He could like be sarcastic, or he could actually like really help guide a child, or he could totally make fun of him. Either way, yes, that's a good one. Wow. Too. Yeah. What's I'm gonna you? go uh, Glados from Portal uh, oh, because she's yeah, very okay. sarcastic with very little patience. Nice. Mm-hmm. I'm surprised, mm-hmm. Very good. Uh, Chris, you didn't say Mamir. Ooh, oh, snap. Oh, that good would one. be good. Oh, it's a good one, too. Just a, a floating head. <laughs> it's <laughs> a class of, one year, uh, of first graders. Right. But it's an arm reaching out, always holding it. You never see the person holding the head. Yes, just, just by the hair. Holding. Yep. Mommy, what's yep. decapitation? <laughs> exactly. Oh, All man. All right, better answer. You got everybody? I, I, I rewind time with my other stone that I have on my infinity gauntlet. <laughs> That's right. You've got the <laughs> time stone, and, and I gave that answer. There you go. Nice. You all loved it. Yeah. All right, this one's going <laughs> to hurt. crowd went wild. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> this one's going to hurt. Facebook, Travis Pospisil. Have you ever wrecked a vehicle? Ooh, I have rear-ended somebody, but I've not. It didn't total either car. Yeah. But I, I did hydro. Totaled, but... I hydroplaned. Ooh, that's mm. yeah, and some on some rain. Mm. Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. Edward, uh, I have not wrecked a vehicle. I've been hit a couple of times, but nothing, uh, nothing that totaled the car. What an awful feeling! Uh, I hate it. Yeah, yeah. I I hit somebody as well. Um, didn't total the car, but it was it was bad. Really? Just a bad. No, I mean not bad as in like it was like traumatic or anything, but it it was just. I mean, I was like a year after I got my license. And so um, that's when, you know, the Flintstones cars came out and I was using my feet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> hard to stop. Exactly. So, yeah, I just guy, uh, he like turned right in front of me at the last second and just popped him. And it's it was bad. It was just a bad feeling. He had this just knot mm-hmm. in his stomach. It was gross. Yes, I hate it. Mine was in high school as well. Yeah. Chris McCracken, Chris- you ever wrecked a car? Uh, I've been in fender benders where I was hit, uh, but never anything that totaled a car or anything like that. Have you ever hit someone? Not that I recall. I don't oh, remember wow. ever. Do- I mean, outside of like maybe in a parking lot, I bumped somebody or something. I'm <laughs> that was not a heck of a wreck. It, but- yeah, exactly. I don't remember it. I woke up and I was 27, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Uh, okay. Uh, Martiz McCray. Hey, uh, have you guys played. Uh, Mortal Kombat 11, and who is your favorite character? Nope. Anyone? No, I have not, and Scorpion. No. Yeah, no, and Sub Zero. <laughs> or Cabal. No, and whatever the default is. Yeah, is Cabal in this one? Cabal was my favorite back in the day. I think he is. I think he is too. I'm je- I'm checking, checking. Yes, he's in this one. Cabal is my okay. answer. There you go. Who, who's the guy with the the like the razor hat? He's got like a round Raiden. hat. Raiden. Raiden. No, I'll, I'll say Raiden. that one. No, that's not Raiden. Okay. Uh, Raiden's the god of no. thunder. Yeah, but he also has uh, the razor hat. No, he doesn't have razor hat. He just has, it's just a round hat. The razor yeah, hat guy. It's like razor sharp. Yeah, name. but he would throw it and it would hurt he's, people. Yeah, yeah. Like, that wasn't Raiden. I'm telling y'all, uh, y'all going to get oops. All right, just let the record show. I did not partake in this oops. Well, I didn't say a name. I'm just saying that guy. Yeah. Who is that it? That guy. Who threw a hat and hurt people? <laughs> Somebody look it up. Who threw a hat and hurt people? It was Raiden. <laughs> could have sworn it Raiden was. Could, Raiden could throw his hat. No, you're okay. incorrect. <laughs> oh man, somebody. No, yeah, Kung Lao is his name. K U N G space L A O. Kung Lao. Kung Lao. Yeah, oh, hat, he maybe. did throw his hat. Oh yeah, that's All the right. one. Yep. You can thank me now for saving us from that. Oops. We yeah, thank you, Chris. sir. Did Raiden never throw a hat? Huh. No, he would fly through the air and go. Ah, blah, 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 that's and, right. Like, you. Oh yeah. wow. That's my new ringtone. That's right. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Uh, Okay, so Chad Fackler says, this has probably been talked about before, but in Overwatch, what are your mains and what type of map do you prefer? Woo. Ed? My main is probably Junkrat. I've got the most hours with him by far. Uh, But recently, I've really been playing a lot of healers. Moira, 
Mercy and Brigitta. Dude, you are good with Moira, I must say. I never understood. I, I couldn't grasp Moira, but when I've watched you streaming, it's pretty awesome. It's thank you. It's I definitely go in in waves with characters. I've been doing a lot of Sombra lately, been playing a lot of D.Va lately. Um, my favorite type of a map is the escort maps. Moving the payload. Nice. Moving the payload. Um, I like Moira and May and have recently fallen in love with Baptiste, like I said. And I mm -hmm. like the control maps. Control! Do you, you have really? to oh. capture a point and hold it. Only because, the, yeah, they get so tense where it's like 99%. Oh, my God. Then you have to get it. Oh, I love that. Nice. Christopher? Um, the character I have the most hours logged with is uh, McCree. And I do mm -hmm. like McCree, but I, like closely behind him is Zenyatta. Um, oh, I'm kind of like yeah. Ed. I play almost everybody. I've definitely mm -hmm. kind of gotten to a point now where I settle in a little bit more. And I will play... Um, one of those two, or I will play Moira, uh, mm -hmm. Reaper, if we need someone that just is really doing a lot of damage. And I like playing a tank. I like playing either Roadhog or, or Reinhardt. Um, I think, I guess I would have to say, based on hours, my main is McCree. But man, I, I will really bounce around. Yeah. And I think my favorite map type is, I don't remember if it, ha I, I think it's called the hybrid one. I like the one where you capture a point and then you push a payload to the last Yes. Point. It's like yeah, a hybrid. Yeah, the hybrid. Two. Yep. I like that no, one. Oh, I like that Those too. are good. Yes, yeah, yeah, I changed mine to hybrid. I use, <laughs> I use Chris's time stone. <laughs> oh, that's right. Because it, it is the best of both worlds. And I go back and say Kung Lao instead of Raiden. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Well and done. we all Man, loved it. We're getting yes. so much use out of that time stone. I know, you know right? great. Yep. Uh, yes, mine's Junkrat and uh, hybrid as well. Nice. Uh, Brennan Levitt. This week for me has definitely been an interesting one. I was summoned for my first ever jury duty. Oh, oh, sweet. Myself and eight others were the lucky ones. My question is, have you ever been selected for jury duty and how did you survive it? No, I have I've never been, even been called to apply for jury duty. Yeah, nor have I. I don't but know however, anything about that. Really? So You've I've never heard... been called for it? No. What does that mean? Called for it, and is it different than being summoned? You're select. No, it, you're selected. Same thing. Being summoned. Yeah. Well, I think yeah. because sometimes they'll they'll uh, ask a lot of people to come in, and then the attorneys will ask you questions, and then they'll choose. Okay, we want these people on the jury. Right. So not everyone yeah. called will be chosen, but I haven't even been called to be chosen. I have not called to be chosen That's either. That's interesting. I don't even know You've how never they call been you on the called to court to be in the part of the jury pool. Nope. nope. Do they call you None on the phone? None of you guys have? Nope. Oh. Do they, do, how do I, they call you? I, they call you on the phone? You no, you, you get it. You get it. You typically, you get a letter sometimes these days that they'll send you a text message. But Is usually, it a certified email. letter? I don't know. It shows up in an envelope and says, you've been the city of wherever you live is right is need you to come in these days for jury duty. And you can usually there's a phone number. Of course, nowadays there's a website. Where you can go in if it's like, let's say you're working, you're going to be out of town or you're on vacation that week. You can let them know, hey, I'm not going to be able to be there. And, and if you prove the reason why, and it's not like you're just saying it. Really? They'll usually just reschedule it another time. I yeah, don't know anything now, about that. You, no, I've, oh, you know what? I know why Gabe hasn't gotten it. It's because I believe, at vote. least in Texas, it's tied to your registration to vote. Right. Oh, so that makes sense now. That's what they pull from. I registered yeah. to yeah. vote. Oh, okay. But once, like a long time ago, or, or like recently, like every year, do you? You have to register every year to vote? Yes. No, oh, definitely. Well, yeah, every, every time vote. that a, it, it only lasts you like mean every two four years, years, right? Or three years or whatever. Like it doesn't last indefinitely forever. If no, but I'm saying it it's once, not it's every not like, four years. I think it's every four. I thought it was every two, but maybe it's not. Maybe it's four. I have no idea. Uh, I, I, I have registered in the past, but I haven't registered recently. Yeah, it's, now, I, I also in Texas heard is tied to your registration. That if you have your own business, um, you do not have to serve jury duty because it takes away from your. I don't know your about that part. Thing. I don't. Mm -hmm. I don't either. I don't either but that's that's what I've heard. But I. Uh, if you what? If you own are, your own business. Yeah. If like, you are summoned and you your job is you have your own business, then you don't have to serve jury duty because that is. You know, you're not. But you're that would be more like an excuse that wouldn't keep it from showing up in, in yeah. that scenario. Right. Yeah. The way I that you're know. explaining it. That's I, crazy. I, I, I don't know. I think if you have to prove that, you know, you own your own business and that. Uh, yeah. And you're self-employed, 
then you don't have to serve. Hmm. Either way, if, if even if I did have to serve, I would hate to serve. So I'd just go in there and be like the biggest racist possible so that they just throw me right out. You have to say you hate white people, though. Right. <laughs> it would be funnier that way. It's a it self-loathing would be funnier that Caucasian. Way. Yeah, it's a self-loathing. Yes, <laughs> yeah. I am the self-loathing Caucasian. <laughs> Jeez. I love it. Uh, that's uh, awesome. To answer the question, yes, I have been on a jury before. How'd it go? Oh, nice. nice. Well done. Uh, and mine was short. It was only one one day. It was like a fraud case from a from an insurance company. How many and, people did they uh, kill? They did not kill any people. <laughs> it was all just about money and. Did the money. glove fit? Was it interesting? Yeah, I thought I thought it was kind of interesting. It was neat to be, be on cool, one actually. that was for at least for a day and wasn't something where it's like, oh, a big time murder case and you're gonna yeah, have to be on this yeah. for three months uh, or be, something ridiculous yeah. like that. I wouldn't want that at all. What do they do no. with that? Like, you just don't go to work. Yeah, you don't go to work. What? And they, they, who you, pays your bills? They'll provide you a hotel room, and you go to the hotel, and then to the court, and then to the hotel, and then to the court. Oh, For sh- months, sh- I would, and you're not. Ooh, well, I yeah. mean, it just depends on what it is. if it's a big enough case then that goes on yeah, for that man. long. Then yeah, you stay. On, and you're not. I don't know how they monitor this, but you're not supposed to watch news broadcasts or read right. papers or anything because you can't be influenced. You're not supposed to be influenced yeah, by right. outside right. editorial. And other exactly. people's opinions. You're supposed mm-hmm. to just look just the facts, ma'am. Who pays your mm-hmm. mortgage? Well, you get paid for jury duty, but yeah, it's not the same as like a salary income. So it's just yeah, it's just one of those things that's so rare that somebody gets picked on a jury that's going to last even more than a couple of days, let alone months. But isn't so there I'm a sure lot of murder Brian. trials? I would think those would just go on for a long time. Anyway, maybe a couple yeah. of weeks. Most murder trials, I think, are like a couple of weeks if they're you know not super high profile. Gotcha. Which is still yeah. a long time, but yeah. but yeah, I was just on the one for the day. Like the day I went in to get picked, they picked me. I would, did the case, and then I left, all within you know nine to five hours. Nice, nice. The, like a nine to five day. So there you go. It's cool. Hmm. All right, Brendan Myers. What is the last thing you did to take care of yourself? I drank a bunch of water yesterday. All right. I okay. ate three meals. <laughs> <laughs> three square meals edward well well tim emotional. you go first before edward puts us to shame i did yoga <laughs> exactly. what'd you say i did yoga when really yeah on monday you mean when you invented it yep <laughs> hot yoga limber. or regular yoga uh regular yoga really it's like in your house yeah, I, no 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 so the where where i go to the martial arts studio um, oh, yeah. you wife. did that. Oh, you're adorable. I know, right? His, <laughs> wife, his wife uh, is a yoga instructor, so I go on Mondays. Oh, it's awesome. Do you ever go in there to yoga and go, hi, yeah? Oh, sorry, I forgot. Sorry, wrong class. No, <laughs> no. And you ain't started Spider Man? <laughs> <laughs> Who got time That's for right. yoga? I will say I really enjoy hot yoga. I haven't done it in a long time. But I do I like always, yoga. I really enjoyed hot. Yoga. I yeah, do yoga like yoga. Great, I don't man. know nothing about hot yoga. Every it's, it's hot really every time good. I do yoga, so I, I don't know. <laughs> right? Yeah, you are definitely breaking a sweat in yoga. Yeah. That is for sure. Yep. Edward, <laughs> I put, put some lotion on my foot. <laughs> <laughs> and you say I'm old? Oh my gosh! <laughs> I'm just saying, man. You know what? That just shuts the covers. Exactly. <laughs> I'll give you a shiny quarter if you rub my bunion. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that's oh. amazing. All right. All right. Twitter, I'm Micah Garnett. To a karate. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that funny. It is. Yes, it is. What, um, right. what belt are you no, nowadays? Uh, I am He's a green suspenders. Belt. I am a blue belt. A <laughs> suspender. Suspender. What? <laughs> what the, if they gave you colored the, suspenders each I'm time? I'm the wacky tie belt. <laughs> yeah. The tie dye belt. <laughs> tie dye belt. Oh, you're which? <laughs> which, which, which one for real? Before you beat us all up, he's blue. I'm yeah. I am blue belt. Oh, I didn't even know that was one of them. So yeah, yeah. it'll go blue, yeah, red. It goes blue, red, brown, and then chartreuse. Black. Okay, and then yep. because you guys are in Tennessee, then it goes up to Bible. <laughs> uh, Bible hey, belt. Hey, right. nice. Hi-oh, yes, yes, night Edward. show. Well done. Well done. Uh, all right, Twitter, Micah Garnett. If you could cross over any two game series from any console or generation, what would they be and why? Ah, oh, Lego oh. Overwatch. 
<laughs> oh snap! I didn't yeah, even. Look, I, I promise I didn't look at the questions beforehand. That was pretty dude, good. That's one. perfect. Lego that's Overwatch. <laughs> Lego <laughs> Overwatch. Um, I would cross over. Uh, ooh. The uh, what was that one scary game I played for an hour Res- because I lost PT? a bet? No, it was no. a PT. Uh, it was a over a. Uh, psh- it wasn't Outlast. It was Outlast. Yeah, Outlast. I it played Outlast, Outlast because Outlast. we got we got a certain amount of ratings on Twitter on Instagram. Okay. I mean, it's oh, right. golly, iTunes. Woo. Um, uh, that and God of War. Mm. What? Because I was so frustrated that I couldn't fight back those stupid things. I would oh, love to play a scary yeah, game, yeah. but be OP. Because scary yes. games are scary because you can't do anything. Mm-hmm. But Good I call. can deal with demons if I can if I'm Kratos. That's true. Mm. Those two games. <laughs> no. Chris. <laughs> um, I you kind of piggybacking off you. My idea was to have Kratos, but have him go to like play with uh Master Chief in the Master Chief world. Ooh, Ooh. nice. The Halo world. Halo. It's like universe. they're running alongside each other and he's over there. Okay, you're shooting all this stuff, and Kratos just rah, throwing his Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Tim. Uh, I'm going like this is weird. I'm going Days Gone Rocket League because you could use your motorcycle and or other vehicles and just run over hordes. All right, that's, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like Days Gone like, by where, itself. So, is it the, the motorcycles in the Rocket League soccer cage, or the yes, soccer? Yes, the Rocket yes. League so cars you, are like, in the so Days hordes Gone would world. come out into the onto the field, and then you could. Uh, you well, said, oh, you said, <laughs> I'm going Pac Man and Donkey Kong, and all you would do is like eat a bunch of dots. <laughs> That's what you did. You said you said Rocket League Days Gone, so I could take my motorcycle right over hordes. You're like, "That's Days Gone by itself." <laughs> oh my! All right, well, there gosh, you go. That's funny. <laughs> You can use one of the zombie or freaker heads as the ball. You the, <laughs> there you go. You're Perfect. Hitting the the goal. Yeah. There you go. Yep. Yep. And the goal uh, is the mill. The doors are open. I like it. All right, we got everybody. <laughs> yes. All right, Darius Stewart. What game had you excited? Uh, had you excited until you saw the gameplay? For me, it was Final Fantasy VII Remake. It could oh. be a good game. It could be a good game, but the combat and materials. Materia system that hooked me with the original isn't there anymore, and it reminds me of Final Fantasy 15 and Kingdom Hearts. To me, that's not good. Really? After seeing it, I can wait for the sale. Well, we don't <laughs> know that Materia is not going to be there. What's or Materia? The it's I like the powers. It's like fire and Blizzaga and all the the magic you can use, and your a lot of your stuff is tied to Materia, and so there. By the way, that should have been the final villain's name, Blizzaga. Blizzaga. Blazaga or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um that'd be a and, good villain name. And so it's just it's your it's your magic and your it's just things that you can attach to your weapons that make you be able to do that. Do stuff. extra stuff. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. Um what was the question? What game uh, you were you excited about? What you excited until you saw the gameplay? Oh, uh, Anthem. Mm. I was so hype on Anthem. I was so ready to play it. It's actually still my wallpaper on my computers. Like I was so oh, excited wow. to play Anthem. And just when it came out and everybody was like, this sucks. I was like, no way. And so, yeah, Anthem. Mm. What say you, Christopher? Even though I pushed through anyways, I'm going to say Red Dead Redemption. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, because I, I was mm. like, I'm going to give this a go. And then I saw all the gameplay. And it's not, again, not that it didn't look like it looked like trash or anything, but it's just, uh, it's a lot of horse riding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's man. A lot of some camp building and just, you know, I got to eat the beans. All right. You got to, to grow a beard. <laughs> Weren't you That's happy true. about the beard? I did, but I couldn't. You, I had to play till like chapter 40 or something ridiculous before you could grow the really cool epic beard. It's like, oh, come on, get out of here. Yeah, I had so much tonic, my beer should be on <laughs> the floor. That's true. <laughs> that Tim, was. um, mm. uh, probably Shadow of the Tomb Raider. 
Mm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that's a good I, I, one. I've played them all, and then I started playing it, and I'm like, Rrr. oh yeah, that was frustrating. Edward, I, yeah, I'm probably gonna say I'll say uh, Rage Two. When I saw the E3 trailer, I I was like, oh, this actually yeah. looks like it could be a lot of fun, and uh, yeah, I'll, I'll wait as well. I feel like Rage Two. It's interesting because remember, I think we saw Rage Two, and didn't we see? Um, New Dawn. I uh, know what's it called, the Far Cry thing. Yeah, yeah, New Dawn. Wasn't the, that the, the same deal, year? The expansion. Yeah. Didn't mm-hmm. we see those at the same? We were like, oh, those look similar. But then yeah. New Dawn yes. ended up being awesome, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. That's frustrating. Mm. Yeah. Again, so, I haven't played it. I don't know that. It, yeah. I'm not saying it's a bad game. It just hasn't hooked me. Hmm. So you never played any of Anthem? You didn't play like a beta or anything? I played uh, the beta, game? yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, you did? Okay. Okay. But again, it just didn't like, even in there, I was like, eh. Yeah. yeah. I just wasn't, I was just trying to clarify for my own self. Like, is it because you also, because you played it and you didn't like it? Or was it simply just seeing the gameplay and you're like, oh, never mind, I'm out? Yeah, I was playing it a little bit and just not, gotcha. it, it didn't, you know, I was hoping for the Destiny vibes and feels mm-hmm. and that, yeah. the way that grabbed, you know? Mm-hmm. It, I feel like everybody felt that way after E3 and they were all excited about it. Yeah, that and probably it's probably tied with uh, shoot, what was that other guy with that other game that was like had all kind of promising stuff in this game you'll go to different planets and name planets. No Man's oh, Sky. Sky. No Man's no Man Sky. Sky. Oh. That was another Oof, one that yeah. I thought was going to be awesome and then you saw the gameplay and everybody was like <laughs> uh, that's awesome all right on to the final question at dopalicious what hd remake would you have would have to happen to match or exceed gabe's excitement level for final fantasy 7 <laughs> what chris what, what what remake what hd what remake hd remake chris would it be metal gear yes ed, would it be you, it would be ed would it be you don't know jack or ddr Tim, Sticks and Stone. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Gabe, Shenmue 3 come close? <laughs> it was the same announcement. It didn't, it, 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 I was excited, but it didn't come close to the Final Fantasy VII thing. Yeah, right. so he's saying which one of, which, what game for you guys would which match my HD excitement? Which remake for? would have to happen? Yeah, Chris? I, it, it is Metal Gear. I, I want it so bad. So bad. There you the go. original Metal Gear Solid. Mm. Edward? Because I didn't really game like that when I was younger, I don't think I have one that would match Gabe's reaction. Mm-hmm. I don't, I'm not sure that there is one. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you too, because I don't really know either. That's right. That's so right. I'll stick with Sticks and Stones. <laughs> Sticks and Stones, the HD remake. That's right. Nice. I like it. Now, that okay. is it. Thank you, everybody, for all the questions. We had yeah, some good ones. Those are good. That was awesome. Yeah. Thank you guys so, so much. Okay, so for some reason, I keep Fortnite installed on all my consoles. Yeah. I've got it on (laughs) the Xbox, the Switch, the PlayStation. And I don't even like Fortnite, and Mm -hmm. I don't play it. Yep. So the question is, is there any game that you keep on your console that you never play? And it's just like sitting there, and you're like, why do I still have this on my console? Or on multiple consoles, I don't even play this game anymore. Is there any game like that for you guys? Ed? Yeah, I've got Fortnite and Apex Legends on both. Do you really? And Xbox, yep. <laughs> yes. Wow. I love that. Chris? <laughs> it doesn't have to be you something know, you don't like. I, I just yeah. said Fortnite because I don't like it and I somehow, some reason, um, have it on all of them. But there's something you've left on there for forever and you're like, you keep telling yourself maybe you go back and play it, but you're not going to go back and play it. Uh, the game that I comes to mind is I have Don't Starve on my PS4. Yeah. I used to play it with Stacy and Katie, and sometimes I'd be Stacy, Katie, me, and Kale. Yep. Um, yep. But I was, I never really quite took to it, but also I was really bad at it. So they stopped wanting to play with me. And so I don't, <laughs> I don't play with it. <laughs> on the my way that's own. true. Yeah. I, no, it's true. And I don't play it on my own. But yet, I'm pretty sure it's still on my PS4 in one of the folders. That, oh, so you I make folders. Get rid of that. Oh, yeah. Oh. Uh, really? I can see you making folders. How many yep. folders do you have? You're that organized. Categories? Yeah, how uh, many folders only, do you have? 
I think I only have three. I can boot up the old PS4 here and find out. I have a VR folder, and that's it. I do have a VR folder. There you go. Nice. Tim, you have anything installed that you don't play? Yeah, I have I have uh, Bloodborne, and <laughs> I have... What's the one with uh, the Hayden Penitary uh, horror one? New uh, oh, until, until, dawn. Dawn. until Dawn. Until Dawn. I have that one on there, too. And I want to play them. I just haven't. Because they were free at one point on PlayStation Plus, so I grabbed them. Okay, between those two, if you had any inclination until dawn is the one that you yes i pretty pretty much sure i would i cannot that believe that is that good that's crazy so good people well, really it's like more that about game. like between the two like i i just don't see tim continuing on in any form or fashion with bloodborne but i could see yeah. him doing that with the other one yeah yeah i got yeah, and i've seen some gameplay of until dawn i'm like yeah it looks pretty cool i should probably try it mm-hmm there you go Chris, to answer your question, oh, I have you, four yeah. folders. Four folders. Four. There we go. What are they? Uh, I have apps, then I have faves, then I have new, and then I have PSVR. Is there anything in the new one that's old? Uh, yes. <laughs> Is there anything <laughs> in Actually, the new one? Actually, that's where Don't Thank you. I just <laughs> found it. Is there anything in the new one that should be in the faves one? And how do you remember which one it's in? Like Apex, which one is that under? Uh, Apex is actually not in a folder at the moment because I launched it so quickly and so often that it and Overwatch are just right there on the home. Okay. There yeah. you go. I like that. There's ain't no, ain't got no time for a folder. That's right. I just got to right. get, get right into those bad boys. Ed, you already said one? Yeah, Fortnite and Fortnite uh, Apex. and Apex. That's right. Let us know what games are just hogging up hard drive space, sitting there on your console, even though you don't play them anymore. And we will talk about it next week. Episode 248 in the books, 348. There you go. Oh, man. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, I'm back. That's cool. We just get to do episode 300 again. That dog on the time stone. I know that dog on time stone. Jeez. Every time. Jeez. Speaking of, I wouldn't mind having going inside and having a time scone right now, if you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, oh, right. Hi-o. I'm Gabe Patillo. You, mm. you just mean a scone, right? <laughs> It got a scone. <laughs> It'd be the soul scone, Other, the time scone. I, I don't get it. The, the infinity scone. scone. Yeah. yeah. The power scone. That's awesome. Hey, I would have been part of that fight if he was trying to get all the scones. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, like, he see Chris show. Hold on yeah. one doggone minute. Yeah. <laughs> The blueberry scone is mine. <laughs> Where's the tea? We must have no tea else. with our scones. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, Gabe and Silla, Tim Router, Epple says you're Chris McCracken, and we are married to the games, and we are up out this thing. Bam!